Hello, everybody, and we apologize for the delay there. We had a small mix-up with the, with some settings to do with uh, TeamSpeak. Uh, we are back. Um, there, everything else is in. Everything else is checked. We just did a full checklist of everything. But again, apologies to all of the people watching. Um, I guess I'm a little out of practice, but we are here um, at live at Most Autodrome for the sixth round of the Tom Onslow Cochleo series. Uh, I am back for this race, and as if you can tell, I'm going to be a little rusty, and I, I will take uh, the verbal abuse later for my mistake. However, um, it doesn't change the fact that we are here now, and as you can see, we have the team champion, we have the driver championship standings up there, and being halfway through the, the season, um, we have the championship standings lined up, and uh, it sounds to me like we might have just a small bit of um, delay here. There we go. It should fix the sound there now with one more setting change, but championship standing-wise, Jack Keithley has basically taken a massive points lead over second place Jesper Talberg and um, not being here with the last two rounds uh, it ended up being a, another double win uh, after all said and done Kilo taking a double win at Thruxton and a double win for Lauritsen at Poznan so it's been a fairly lopsided uh, affair this season for the Precision guys as they also have the team the championship standings uh, for the team title locked up as well too currently but um, as you can see on the screen you can quickly have a look down we do are going to be a little short on time for the championship rundown so any if you're looking for any of these points you can go to uh, results.touringproseries.com and you can full, find full scale details of every race uh, and all of the championship points currently. Uh, a couple things we do need to talk about, uh, Scott, is um, as we were mentioning while we were a little bit muted, um, <laughs> is we were talking about the car being changed. We are. Unfortunately, uh, it, we, have, we have to say goodbye to our beloved 2008 shape clear. It is the final race weekend that we're going to be, it's going to be using it in service for this race. And we are sad to see it go. It's had a good three and a half years of service for us. Um, but... Uh, uh, as one thing must end, another thing begins, and uh, I think you've got a picture of it ready to put I do, on the yep. screen. I do, yeah. This this here is our 2013 hey. Clio. It is. It's and what an absolute machine this thing is. It's absolutely beautiful. It's now got an, an extra horsepower. I believe it's now gone from a two liter, um, not not four liter, oh, which uh, I think Chris think is. A, I've never heard of a four liter Clio. That's incredible. Um, but um, yeah, the, it's gone from a two liter naturally aspirated car. We've gone to a 1.6 liter turbocharged. It's got about now 220 brake horsepower, about 20 or 30 more than the Clio we're currently using. Um, it's got fantastic. Operated suspension. It's using um, it's using 320 millimeter AP racing brakes on it. It's got one-way adjustable dampers, and it also has a six-speed sequential gearbox, um, which. There is the option to use paddle shifters as well, as well as a sequential shifter. Not that it really matters. In our it's factor, also slightly heavier, I believe, about it five is. kilos. I, I believe so, yeah. I believe it is slightly heavier. But, um, yeah, and one thing, styling-wise, it looks absolutely fantastic, in my opinion. So, uh, And, of course, we've got that for the final four races, which are all in, on UK shores. Well, I mean, this is going to be um, a great end to this season. We do have a four-week break till the, till the next Clio clear race after this so you're gonna have to find something else productive to do on a wednesday evening afternoon depending on where you are on the globe uh but uh we are here at most autodrome and uh we are uh running here uh again with precisions uh taking the top three spots once again and we'll pull up the screen here and i will give you a chance to have a look as we ride along with jack keithley uh who has just been taken down by alexander lortz and who's taken the quickest time of the day so far um this track is very very uh, I, I guess the word to describe it would be fairly, fairly. It's the kind of like a roller coaster almost. It's kind of like a snake. We're on the board with Simon Kilo as he's going to start a hot lap here around most autodrome. I'm going to give you a quick call of what you can expect to see here uh, at this race. And as you start this lap, you're starting down a very, very long straightaway where drafting is going to play a big part. Uh, turn one is not very much of a turn. It's more just like a blip on a radar. You've got a little quick flick to the right. And then it's going to go to the left, and it's all about momentum. That's one, and two is here. This long left-hand corner is your flat out. And again, drafting is still a big part because you're coming into a braking zone here. Through three, into four. That's your heavy. That's your heavy braking there. And then you come up through. Uh, sorry, that's four there. This is five. And then now we're down over to seven, six, and then this is seven. Seven's one of the tightest corners on the circuit. You're going to keep it very close because this is, again, another run out where it's all about, all about momentum. Exiting seven, this is not classified as a corner, but the one just up here is. This is turn eight, and it seems like you're constantly turning here at this, at this racetrack. Heading into nine, it's a fast right-hander. You're going to use the curb, get the, car a little, get the car a little sideways, use as much curb on the outside as you can. A little blip to the left, not considered a corner, but into ten. 
heavy braking zone, drafting again a factor. Gonna try not to take too much curb on the inside because it is fairly high. Coming through 11, a long off-camera left-hand corner as you sweep around and he's, he's bailed on the lap, so we will not get to see 12, 13, or 14. Uh, actually, here we go. This is uh, Keithley through, I believe that's, yeah, that's 11. That's 12 there on the inside. As he comes, that's through 12. Now, this is going to be 13, and this is a long shoot into the last two corners, which is 14 and 15. They're separated by a small short coming in between there. As you see, coming through 14 here, a little bit of curb to the outside of the track, and then there's your, there's your entrance to the pit, but also that little tiny shoot there. As you head into 15, you don't want to go too much over the curb because it'll kill your run down this long straight that we have already uh, discussed about, but that is a lap around most autodrome. And uh, it hears, from what I'm hearing from the drivers, uh, it is going to be very, uh, very draft oriented this race, as you can see, it's very, very flat out here. Yeah, no, it's definitely, I was talking to a few of the drivers, talking to the guys at Core and THR and Precision, and they were all saying that Slipstream is going to be key on some of these set corners. Looking at some of the other corners, which are going to be quite key, um, the last sector is pretty particularly difficult, and also there's one of the, the fast right-handers through sector two as well, and it is going to be something where the, the, there is a, a corner, with the one of the corners, the right-handers, where there are kind of two lines to it, where you can put all four wheels um, over the, across the Astro turf, or you can miss the curbs completely. But if you put a, one wheel a court, on a curb or on a piece of piece of the grass, then it can just push your car one way or the other and put you into the grass uh, quite far away from the circuit. So these guys are going to have to pick their lines very carefully. And this circuit, to me, looking at it in terms of the, terms of the layout and how it flows, it reminds me of. of a circuit similar to something like Aston in, in Holland, where there's there's not too many just long straights where you can relax. You've, as, as you mentioned in the on the hot lap there, you're always kind of turning. And this is a circuit where you've got, as well as some conventional corners, a lot of kinks and and jinks in in the in the straights there. So you, you never really get a chance to properly relax because you've always got some kind of corner, no matter how fast or slow it is coming at you. So these guys are really going to have to be wrestling these guys, wrestling these these Cleos here, um, pr pretty uh, pr <laughs> pretty hard, I, I would imagine. And uh, of course, now we're moving to the qualifying session, I think exactly because these guys only get one shot, it's going to make put them under a lot of pressure. Probably one of the most difficult qualifying sessions of the season, purely because of the nature of the circuit. It is so fairly narrow, but at the same time, it's very winding, and these guys really are going to have to have all their concentration and all their all their focus set just right so they can get this qualifying lap put together. Yeah, and I mean, uh, it's very similar to a roller coaster is what I would describe it as. Um, if it is, uh, if you're constantly turning and it just, just feels like you're just always moving left to right, but it's not a bad feeling. It just makes it a little more difficult to plan and prepare for, uh, you know, what would be a, 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 a classy move, you, to, to put it one way, uh, on someone. But uh, people Rodriguez uh, is looks to be the first of the top ten out here so far. Chris Hack still in, Amaral still in. So we'll hop on more with, Rod with Rodriguez and see him as he starts this lap. But uh, a couple of names to pop up here uh, that are maybe not... Um, people, the viewers may not be used to. Pedro Amaral is new to this server. Um, he won the two races in server two last week, or the last event in server two. So he has made his way up, and he's currently sitting 10th from the time that he set in practice. So very good to see Pedro putting in a good run. I know Pedro well from running in the ATCC. Uh, I think he's making, he's made a nice transition over to the R Factor side of things and uh, is showing that he's got skill anywhere he goes. Yeah, definitely. And also another driver to look for is Thomas Matazewski as well, in one of the THR machines. He's actually put himself sixth in the initial uh, practice sessions just now. So that's really good. It's showing that he's got a nice turn of pace and that he's definitely making the most of it uh, right now here at Most. One thing which we haven't, which ha haven't seen haven't seen yet, which I've seen in the past couple, two or three race weekends, is that we haven't seen... One of the first guys to go out is usually Toby Davis, and in obviously the reigning series champion, currently sat, I believe it's fourth in the point standings, apologies if that is wrong, uh, yes, fourth in the point standings with 402 points. He usually used, likes to go out and set a lap, lap time early to get the benchmark down so that he can get it out of the way. But it looks like he's now being a bit more patient this time. He's obviously realised is if he wants to get himself on pole position, he maybe has to wait a little bit more to let other guys kind of put their lap times down and see exactly what they're going on to. Um, Pipa Rodriguez has already started his qualifying lap, so he is now making his way down towards these few kinks. Uh, turns three and four, and then five and six and seven. And, uh, of course... 
the young Portuguese driver does some karting in the, in the real life, has actually karted in the real life with Antonio Felix da Costa, who is a current for Formula Renault 3.5 driver, along with uh, a fellow, uh, uh, an a ex TPS uh, racer in Stoffel van Dorn, who we have to say congratulations to because he did win the second the second race at his home round at Spa this previous weekend. So congratulations, Stoffel. It's a Stoffel. big deal to do it. Do it on your home track is there's nothing like it. Absolutely, and to, to do it at a place like Spa is absolutely incredible. And he's he already won at two fantastically brilliant circuits, and that is Monza in the wet. Uh, I should remind as well, he won at Monza in the wet right at the beginning of the season, and now he's won at Spa. So if he can win there, it's pretty key, key that he can do pretty well. The, the previous race weekend before that was Monaco, and of course he's raced there. He did have a slightly tough qualifying. Session oh, as he Rodriguez. runs wide there as, a, as, <laughs> as we're giving people yeah. a little talking about. But uh, yeah, it's unfortunate he dropped the wheel, and he's not going to set the time he wanted. No, as I said, Rodriguez was very ragged on the edge over there, but as like I said, it's one, it's one of those things that's going to punish you. And it's actually going to be Gary Lerner that sets the initial time uh, for this session. 141.612.428, and he gets Darren Adams and Matt Richards jumping on a 41.612 and 41.812. And Lucas Demelin on a 43.3, so he's quite off the pace, 1.9 seconds off provisional pole. And Rodriguez slots in, uh, into fourth at the moment on a 42.158 so that's obviously all that mistake that he made that was worth right two, um, I was lap. worth uh, one point I believe 1.4 seconds because he was almost close to a 141 flat from practice so or sorry I, I, I was about a 1.1 uh, a second mistake so um, not going to be happy with that but we should see something from him as the race goes on but Davis has now taken to the track uh, we're now four minutes into this session um, and you know you've got the guys the uh, the precision guys still just holding true and they're just waiting out they're waiting out time in the pits waiting for the proper moment to come out here and set their lap time Talberg still not out Chris Hack still not out. Chris Hack is on track let's have a look at him he is in the 17th spot I believe he's on his hot lap let's see here Chris Hack nope Amaral is actually gonna come around to finish his lap and he was running very well in practice so let's see where Pedro can slot himself in. We'll change the timing just slightly to give us a better view as uh, these people are completing their lap. As Pedro Amaral comes on the final corner here, just doing your best not to touch that curb because you know you know what momentum's like, Scott. You need to carry as much of it in these lower horsepower cars in this heat. You know that if you touch that curb as he crosses the line, he crosses in second. So Pedro Amaral goes to the provisionally P2. And just bumps Darren Adams down to third position as Gary Lennon still holds provisional pole. Yeah, excellent lap from Pedro to prove his worth. Of course, we've said this is actually his first, as you mentioned, his first ever race in Server One. So of course, he's definitely adjusting to life pretty quickly. And to put it provisionally second is actually a pretty big deal. Looking at some of the other guys out there, of course, we have got Toby Davis out there, and he is currently up on Lennon's first time in Sector One. He was up by just over a tenth, so he's looking pretty sprightly as he heads through. Uh, I'm probably going to struggle with corner numbers here because they all look the same when I yeah, not a yeah. track I'm <laughs> mostly familiar with, but he goes through that very fast right hand I think that we were talking about. And uh, end of the second sector, he's up now by a further two tenths, so Toby Davis looking pretty strong here. Now, Lennon's best time, I haven't got it on screen right now, but Davis is really starting to motor along here, of course, but we have to wait for the Precision Boys to come out and see exactly where they stand. They were setting 1 minute 40s in the practice sessions just gone. So Davis is really going to have to find something in this final set final sector here to really pull out 1 minute 40. If he can manage that, that will put him in great contention for pole position. So here comes the reigning champion in this final corner. Very similar to the one you get at Pojna. Very long right-hander. Brings it onto the pit straight. Is it going to be a pole for THR? What kind of benchmark times are you going to set? Cross the line he goes. And the time he sets is indeed a 140.7. So 140.7. Okay, so now the question is, is what, what is the answer going to be from the Precision guys? That's the question. We need to know, um, as the Precision guys are now going to be on track, as they just all head out at the same time. So everyone else has set a time. Lawrence and Keith, Lee, Kilo, all on track. John Monroe. Matazewski was the uh, kind of the dark horse and showing a great time. Talberg is out. Hack is on his hot lap right now. Uh, we've got Petzold also waiting to set a lap. See who we got here. Jacobs as well is getting his time here. I can see Tolborg's out there as well. Yeah, Tolborg is actually, um, he's still on his outlap. So Hack, Petzold, these two guys are actually setting their times now. They're actually very, very close to each other. So we're going to wait and see where Hack's going to slot in. Uh, he's still got about three quarters of a lap to go, or sorry, one quarter of a lap to go. Uh, as he's at a 117 currently, 
Let's see where everyone is slotted in. So it's Davis currently. Sovic slots into the 11th position. Chris Hack currently coming around the, the penultimate corner. Final corner it is. He's to set his lap here for the first race of the sixth round of the Tom Onslow Cole Cleo series. Chris Hack coming up to the line. A top 10 would be fantastic as he crosses the line. Where is he going to slot in? Chris Hack goes to P2. A 141 flat and bumps Gary Lennon. Great lap by Chris Hack there. Well, well done to him. Now let's get on board with the other gentleman. There's got Ben Richards, Jacobs, Talberg. Talberg has now, he's starting his hot lap. Keithley has gone purple in sector one. Alexander Keithley has gone purple with by quite a margin, a whole tenth up on Keithley. So this is now, a, if you look here, let's hop on TV board as you got Jack Keithley, Kilo behind him, Keithley in front of him. And where's John Monroe? John Monroe is, I believe, just a little ways. He's actually leading this train. So just... Yep. It's he's a about precision. Half, he, he's about half a tenth off. Oh, well, that was a mistake from Keithley on the exit of that right-hander. And he's kicked up a bit of dust there. And in fact, Monroe's now down by a tenth. Uh, Kilov's just started his cut hot lap. Keithley is still down now by half a tenth because of that mistake. Larrison's the one that's flying. He's now a quarter of a second up on current pole man Toby Davis. So he's the one to watch at the moment. Now, if any of these guys can make up some time in this final sector, that's going to be crucial. And Monroe's now off by you know, just over a tenth. Looking at the rest of them, he's going to have to cycle through. Talbog's off by a tenth and a half, too, as well. So at the moment, the man we're all going to watch for potential pole position is going to be Alexander Larrison, who really has come on strong here since the be beginning of the season. So we'll watch them as they come across the line. Well, Thomas Matuszewski in the background also has gone purple as well on Toby Davis's time, which would mean he could possibly slot him amidst the, the um, uh, all these guys. John Monroe goes to second. Jack Keithley bumps him, goes to second. Alexander Lorchin goes to fourth. Davis is still holding the pole. Where is Simon Kilo? Where is he? Is he going to be able to bump him? Ja as Jesper Talbert crosses the line. What has Talbert got? Can he answer? No, he's getting the 41s down to fifth. So Talbert back to fifth. We need Ke Simon Kilo is out on track. Matuszewski is out there as well. Thomas Jacobs slots into the 15th spot. So in the final minutes and seconds of qualifying here, we've still got... Ryan Callen out there who has not started his his lap. Um, I don't know if he's going to make it. He's not. He's not going to make it. He's got seven seconds. Ryan Callen is going to miss his lap. But Simon Kilo is going to cross the line. Where is he going to slot in? Where is he going to fit in? Right now, THR has stolen this pole position from what seemed to be an unbeatable precision team. In practice, Simon Kilo crosses the line. Fifth. Not going to do it. Toby Davis has uh, essentially... Taking the pull. Thomas Matuszewski to 8th. Talbrick slotted into the 6th position. So, I got to say, Scott, I was not expecting this. Well, t t Toby was talking to me before. And he did say that he was feeling a lot more confident than uh, he was two weeks ago in Poznan. But I, I honestly thought it was going to be another precision pull. So, for... And, and all in the practice sessions, Toby didn't manage a one-minute 40 time. So to pull that out of the bag, right when it mattered most, that is that was definitely the qualifying session of a champion from, from Toby that Davis. Abs so, absolutely fantastic. That last, few, that last few minutes was fantastic watching and these it, guys. So you've got – we're, we're going to give a quick rundown of this grid when we get back here from uh, a quick commercial break. So hold tight. We'll be right back.
Hello everybody and we are back live from Most Autodrome for the sixth round of the Tom on Slow Cold Cleo series. We have just finished the first round of qualifying for this, or sorry, the, for, for the first race of this round. Uh, Scott's going to give you the rundown of the grid so you can know where everyone lines up. Thank you, Keith. So here's the grid for race one here at round six at Most. And it's Toby Davis with a fantastic pole position time to set his, I can't remember how many pole positions he's taken this season, but it's another pole for Toby Davis with THR. Definitely probably something of a surprise, but it's a pleasant one nonetheless. Jack Keithley, championship leader, will start alongside second. Then it's going to be John Monroe and Alexander Lauritsen making it an all-precision second row in third and fourth. Simon Kilov, who is looking for a great result after he disconnected from race two in Poznan. He needs desperately a good points haul to start uh, points haul in ideally both races, and he needs to do that in fifth and starting alongside Jesper Talborg in sixth. I know we're running low on time so I'll quickly scoot through them. So on row four is going to be Chris Hack and Thomas Madazewski. Great effort from him to qualify eighth. Rounding out the top ten is Gary, Gary Lennon in ninth and Pedro Amaral in his first server one race. Great effort from him to qualify tenth. Rest of the grid is in eleventh place is Heinz Petzold and Jimmy Hughes up there in twelfth as well. Great effort from him too. Ra uh, row seven is Darren Adams and Simon Shepard in all core seventh row. Richards and I'm not sure who's supposed to be in 16th, but someone uh, that's row eight. Row nine, Thomas Jacobs and Pipo Rodriguez. No, that's, that's, yes, no, no, row nine, sorry. Row 10 is Chris Butcher for THR. Down a little bit on his time. Off some two seconds off pole. And Scott Slovic in there too in 20th. 21st and 22nd are Ben Richards and Lucas Demelin on row 11. Row 12 is Nick Hughes and Jim Flanagan. Row thir 13 is going to be Jonathan Osserklinth and Robert Powell. And then at the back of the grid, it's going to be Luca Peklash for core and Ryan Callan, who missed out on his qualifying lap right at the end, just at the bit. So he left it a little too late, and he will start from 28th and last at the back of the grid. Definitely, and I mean, we're going to um, just quickly take a break here. Uh, we'll be right back. We're going to give a, um, a shout-out to uh, GamePod, who is a big supporter of Touring Pro Series, and we will be back with the warm-up lap for you guys in just, just a moment. GamePod, the ultimate race rig for those serious about sim racing, puts you in the driver's seat with all the controls at your fingertips. Be number one on the road, in the race, in the game. GamePod, the choice of champions. Inside SimRacing.tv, the fastest show on the internet. Sim racing news and reviews since 2007, with new shows every week. The warm up, so uh, it's good timing. That. Hello, everybody. We are back and we are live at most autodrome and we are starting the warm-up lap for the first round of this event as these guys are lining up let's get on board with the front runners so now something we caught caught that uh, something that we did catch or heard of after the fact of qualifying is that the um, the pole sitter Toby Davis timed a very well timed draft off of his teammate Chris Butcher which essentially gave him that little bit of an edge to get him down into the sevens or sorry into the low into the 40s which would put him ahead of the team Precision. Now, I know you had talked with Precision earlier, Scott, and what, what was it they were talking about? Well, they were saying, of course, that um, Precision, that slipstreaming is going to be key on a circuit like this, but they were actually saying they weren't going to take, they weren't going to take the risk of slipstreaming and qualifying because it was just too risky with the nature of the circuit. Whereas, now, that surprised me a little bit because Precision always likes to try and at least get themselves on pole position. You can see that the... The, the procession of precision cars from second down to fifth. So they really are going to be hounding Toby Davis off the start. But he has got backup in the shape of Jesper Talborg in sixth. But it did surprise me a little bit. The precision obviously wants to try and be first. So you would have thought that they want to try and push, do all they can to try and 
grab pole position, but they seem to take a little bit, little bit more cautious approach here in this first qualifying session. Well, well it was THR obviously took the, the approach where they in the, my, their mindset was we need points, we need to take risks, so we need to just go for it. So and, and it definitely paid off, and maybe Precision will see that going into the second qualifying session for race two. Now they may well apply uh, uh, apply the same tactics because you saw exactly how the Precision cars were laid out. They weren't very in close proximity. They were in the same kind of area, but they weren't running nose to tail because they were trying to have as much clean air as possible due to the fact there are so many turns. But that was great strategy from Precision, from THR to take advantage of, of the slip streaming opportunities on this circuit, and it has, definitely has paid off because we have car number one in position number one in in on the grid for race number one. Yes, absolutely, and. Um, it's uh, it, well, it's going to be a very interesting race to see if Toby Davis can can lead this train and, and I mean he's done it this he's done it this season and uh, he's no he's no stranger to the pressure so um, as these guys line up you'll see this is going to be a fairly big grid we're going to have lined up here um, headed down into turn one but let's get on board with uh, looking from the front of the pole sitter the THR orange car of Toby Davis looking down this long which it seems almost never ending hey, Scott. Uh, we got the go. lights. The lights are going red as soon as they're away. We're going to be starting the sixth round, and it's green, and away they go. Toby Davis off to a clean start. In the background, you can see the one precision car squeezing across the track. Toby Davis leads them down into turn one. As you see them, nice, nice, almost single file already. Jack Keithley follows in tow of Toby Davis. Monroe and, and Lordson are close in tow as well. In behind them is Kilo, who had squeezed Talberg right at the start of that race. Talberg now trying to get by around the car of Simon Kilo, but doesn't quite seem to be able to do it. Headed in through three, four, and five. It just seems like a, a sandwich of, uh, a very big sandwich of THR and Precision here. As Precision have four, patty, four patties in the middle of two buns. Yeah, THR a book ending of the top six. And that was a great start for Toby Davis. Minimal wheel spin. And the nature of the grip here, because they're actually quite spread out. I just saw one of the Airstream cars just right on the inside over the curbs at that, at that turn back there at the hairpin, and they fill through this very fast right hand. This is what John Moreau was talking about, other one. Two different lines you can take oh, through there. Oh, sideways for Tolberg. Yeah, as you see, that, that, and that is the key. So you can either go through there at a very, at, um, with the all four wheels over the AstroTurf, or you can avoid the curves altogether. But of course, if you put one wheel on the curb, as Tolberg just did, it can just spit the car one way and then the other. But look at the gaggle of precision cars chasing after Taylor Davis as they wind their way through the end of the second sector and Keithley is starting to give Davis a hurry up here as they go down towards the final few corners at the end of this opening lap and Keithley was wise, he wanted to try and make a move at the inside turn one, it's possible to try and overtake there but you have to be very brave and Keithley just thought no, nope, it's a very long race still to go so I just want to sit back and just try and let push Davis to try and run as fast as he can go uh, maybe a little bit faster than he wants to, but they head across the opening, the uh, end of the opening lap, and they currently lead. But the Precision boys are looking racy. Well, let's get back to the field because I know these guys are going to be fair, they're going to be racy. We can catch them any time, and I'm sure we'll see some racing from them. But Gary Lennon, oh, the sorry, line position. Sorry, just quickly side by side for the lead. Keithy and Davis down towards turn one. Keithy getting very brave indeed over the curves. They're still side by side down towards turn two as the, the other three precision cars stack up in a line, set third, fourth, and fifth. But that was brave driving from both guys there. And careful not to take each other out as they all close up once again under braking. But they went side by side through turn one. Keithy over the curves a little bit and almost lost the back end, but that was brave. Oh, and Keithy control. dives down the inside. Back up the inside contact. contact. Side by side, Keithy a little robust, but makes the move stick as they head on through so turn seven one of the hardest braking zones on the track but, but now Davis Toby isn't giving Davis, up though he is not he's not he's giving up he's got his nose up the outside down towards the right hander here there's very this fast right hand coming through nine the, this is the off camber nine here not quite going to be able to do it there but uh it, it, keithley making short work he's already already by toby but i know toby will not want to let this sit well because there was a bit of contact as, as toby davis jams down the inside keithley crosses over nice Nice clean crossover. Davis got the inside. Contact sideways. Keithley around the outside. Can he hold it? Keithley through. Davis still on him. And Keithley finally holds off the move and pulls a cart length lead here. And look at Larrison also trying to get out to the back. He's now going to go to the inside down towards turn 14. He's got the run. Davis can't really defend much now. Also, John Monroe may poke his nose up the inside too. And look at Larrison shoving Davis to the outside of the corner. And there goes Larrett's into second place now. So Davis has been shuffled down from first through to third in the space of a lap. And now he's got both Simon Kilov and John Monroe to deal with. But Monroe has now got to really keep himself occupied with Jesper Talbot. Great toe down the pit straight here. This could be a chance for Talbot to break into the top five. 
And look oh, at I, how... I, I have to go back a little bit. We got three wide. Pedro Amaral, Jimmy Hughes, oh, and yes. Gary Lennon. All three wide into turn one, boys. This is a little tight for that. As they, they somehow managed to get through there. As Jimmy Hughes fall, goes in back into ninth place. Amaral is back to tenth. Lennon squeezes through up into eighth. I just had to catch that. I saw that in the background as these guys are battling hard and, and seemingly endlessly here. And what's become a top six is now becoming a top seven because Chris Hack fancies a piece of the action in that black and pink Lenovo-backed core racing car. He's right on the back of Jesper Talborg. And look at the train behind that's, that's also tagging along. And that's being led, of course, by Gary Lennon, as you were mentioning, that three-wide duel down the pit straight. But if you see exactly just how the precision cars are surrounding uh, Toby Davis, who goes a little wide through that right, for the fast right-hander there. And now look at this. Larson trying to force his way up the outside of inside of Keithley a little bit there. Would have thought he doesn't want to cause too many headaches for for the team leader, but uh, Larrison definitely wants to try and put himself to the front of the race. But bear in mind, he's already had two race victories. That was both races last time out at Poznan. So I'm pretty sure that Keithley's going to say, I, I, I admire, you, Keith, admire your, your, your fighting spirit, Alex. Well, but, Keith, uh, Keithley was, uh, sorry, Lawrenson was the fastest all through practice. So I, I do believe there's something to be said for his car and, and in the way he's driving this track here because he seems to be all over the back of Keithley. And I think uh, that at some point you have to say, look, I said, I'm, I'm faster. Get out of my way. I don't care, boss. I'm, I'm coming through. <laughs> Well, Keithy does lead the championships, of course. He want to try, he, he'll want to try and take maximum points away from here. But, of course, they have said, that, of course, that, that that race last time out for Larrison was more kind of, instead of it rather Larrison having pace, which he, which he has got, which not not denying that at all. But it was kind of like just, you know, Keithy's had two race victories. Um, well, four now, in fact. Well, um, Keithy's had two. And, obviously, now they thought, hey, it'd be fair if we give Larrison a couple just to make it, just to give him a, a nice, decent haul of points. And they said that all that's left is to give John that, that opportunity to try and, make, uh, try and get some points and, and a couple of wins. But he's currently sat in fifth as they all stack up again into the breaking zones for four and five. And he's got Jesper well, Talbot yeah, these, breathing down his neck. Yeah, and if you, if you have a look at what, we're, what we've got here, this, this train in the little, little ways back, just ahead you've got Pedro Amaral, Jimmy oh, Hughes, Oh, David Jerry sideways, Lennon. sorry. David's a little sideways into the, into the hairpin. That's now put Simon Kilov right alongside him onto his door handles and the young Danes maybe he's going to dive up the inside for the fast right Munro may go with him but no Kilo is a bit smart at all gives a tap to the THJ cast to try and unsettle him a little bit and look at how both Larrison and Keithy are starting to break away a little bit yeah, the, uh, the the guys up front, this is going to be pretty well status quo as they, they're going to, oh and just ahead there you've got Kilo just looking, and this is going to be what we're going to see for most of this race. We got 15 laps of these guys dueling in this in these conditions because, I mean, we've seen this all season long. These guys get close and they 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 fall, they come back. But I mean, look at Jimmy Hughes has now made his way through these guys. He's past Lennon, past Amaral. Jimmy Hughes up to eighth for Walk Racing. What a what a run for him, running the and look at this. And and there's and it's definitely not a uh, a walk away here. It's, uh, no pun intended for walk racing. But he's now got Amaral, who is new to this server one, all over the back of him with Gary Lennon close in tow. Great racing down for the the lower rungs of the top ten. You can see Pepe Rodriguez has also popped himself onto the onto the back of that train of three cars to make it a foursome. There's, you see Pepe Rodriguez in the black and orange car in eleventh place with the GT Competizione backing there. He's definitely putting in a great performance. As they head down towards turn one, a very fast corner. Where's Amaral going to try and make a move here? Just stays on the back bumper of Jimmy Hughes. He's at the black and gold car with the blue headlights. You can't really miss it because they're quite luminous. Now we're on board with Amaral. As Hughes just covers the line well. Little squirrely under braking for turns three and four. But yes. he's doing a great job so it's, far. It's nice, seeing, it's nice seeing this group here battle close because they've already shared the positions, I think, about, about 10 times between the lot of them. Uh, people right there, Darren right there, Thomas Jacobs, Simon Shepard. This is a nice group uh, to have a battle. We'll keep an eye on this field. But um, as uh, as we go back, just we'll have a quick look up front, get an update of what's happening up here. As you can see now, Toby has gapped himself slightly from Simon Kilo. He's now point, point 0.6 away. However, the two boys up front, now, I can tell you that Alexander Lortzen is a for, is a kart racer. Uh, he is also looking to move into cars. But he knows that two cars or two carts is better than one. And when you put two of them together on a track like this and you just work with each other, you slowly try to open that gap up. If it doesn't work, then what you're doing is slowing yourself down. You have to get by the guy you're pushing. It's a, just a, it's a known fact. So now that Davis is there, they have to keep an eye on that gap. And if it starts to close, Alex is going to have to say, hey, boss, I'm faster. Let me buy. You might want to quickly go back to the battle for eighth. We've got a, I'm just watching it right now. Fantastic scrap between Jimmy Hughes oh, and Pedro Amaral. They've been going through. side by side. Final Look corner. At this. What They've a been doing it, but 
They've been doing it for the past few corners. I've just been watching whilst you're reporting on the front too. And Gary Lennon almost made it around the outside through the end of the second sector. He was very close. But Jimmy Hughes just about closed the door to, the, to prevent the Scots from, from getting through. Then he's got a great toe down the pit straight. Amaral's thinking, where, where do we need to go? This way or that? Lennon wants a piece of the action too. This is over 8th, 9th and 10th. And Rodriguez will just sit back and think, well, he can't sit back for too much longer because he's got the another one of the core racing cars right on his back. Bumper. Oh, what is oh, to the inside! Oh, a little hits bit of contact. Lennon hits the anti-cut, bounces the car <laughs> a little bit, and Amaral's like, okay, I can breathe now. You can imagine... Overall is driving with looking up at the middle. Oh, oh look, look at the tight. slide! Oh, Lennon, look at the, the slide you use! Lennon, huge oversteer Hughes. moment. That was a oh, huge dear. oversteer moment. But that's exactly what you need to do in one of these clears. Just literally, any front wheel drive race car, if you get sideways like that, you just floor the throttle, counter steer, and it'll bring the back end round as they head towards the this very fast right hand. It can catch a lot of drivers out through here. Oh, who's that? Oh, that's, the that was one of, uh, who was that? That was that's one of the optimal oh, simulation cars. Jacobs. That's, Thomas yes, Jacobs. Thomas Jacobs, yeah. He's off just slightly, but he's not too, he hasn't lost too much, but he's going to probably lose another spot here as Chris Butcher comes up really fast, not quite going to do it. But Jacobs was right in the thick of that battle, and I'm sure he's not going to be happy. I'm not sure if there was contact back there. Let's have a quick look if we can see it, because uh, it was coming through. Well, looks to, oh, he just, he, he blocked up on the outside, went too deep, and just unfortunately carried on. So uh, he, he's going to look forward to get, getting back with this group if he can. Uh, as we'll just do a quick update up front uh, again status quo Jesper Talbert, Jesper Talbert, Chris Hack, Monroe all together now uh, Kilo has closed in on Davis the gap has been has now stayed to, at 0.9 between Davis and Lauritsen it's actually opened up slightly so they've, he's lost two tenths as now down the inside into turn one Kilo on Davis through one through two side by side Kilo has made it happen as Davis drops a wheel on the outside very scary moment there for Davis but Kilo now makes it a precision one, two, three. Can he, can he, can he come back? That was absolute heart in mouth stuff there. But of course, Davis is a, a supercar racer. He knows exactly how to counter it, how to control something that's light and almost well, out let's, of control. Let's, so have a look, let's have a look from on board of Davis. Let's see what he's, what, what he's seeing at this very moment. So looking back, you see him. Oh, now you see him, now you don't. Coming through one, two, side by side. He's outside dropping a wheel. That's a scary moment right there. That's, we're talking about 160 kilometers an hour at that point you're doing, if not more. Probably closer to 180. Oh, just in the background, that was one of the, the John Monroe on the grass, and he's lost the place to Talbog, and here comes side by side with Chris Hack underneath the bridge. Oh, and there you the go, Chris Hack is taking through. it. Chris Hack down to the inside of John Monroe, book it. John Monroe make it, uh, John Monroe losing a spot, now back to seventh, and losing sight of his uh, precision teammates. But cac has gone wide on the exit of that right right hander and now this might give him a rather chance to get back the young scotsman he's definitely not going to let this one go lying down it's this fantastic shot this week underneath the bridge and well, hack's covering the inside line well but monroe's trying to just get his nose up the inside it's caught on precision as they head through the final corner this will give monroe the toe he needs down the pit straight to maybe try and get the sip stream this is over members seventh and eighth place or sixth and oh, seventh, I should say, rather. And, and now Kilo has gapped himself already from Toby Davis. Four tenths of a second in just one lap. But now Talberg is closing in on his teammates. So we've seen this time and time again. But this is the battle here. Chris Hack with John Monroe in tow. These two drivers, uh, fairly young and upcoming drivers in the Touring Pro Series, have uh, kind of bounced around a little bit, shown some speed here and there. But you can see now they're locked in a youth battle here as they come through and John Monroe makes a Wonderful beautiful pass. move on Chris Hack. We need to watch that and show you what a what a textbook move that is. Just timing it just right. Just keeping keep, keeping your cool. Let's hop on board with uh, John Monroe. Oh jeez. As you as you time it in, let me just let me just pull this back one little second here. You can see he just times it, just gets up on the back of him, gives him a little nudge, gets him wide. I mean, not, not much contact, waits for the braking zone, perfectly timed move, gets through the inside, hold, hold, tries, tries to hug the apex so he can't cross back over. Very well executed move from the young John Monroe. Yeah, that's beautiful. Just he put, put, pulled it to the outside, just about got his car in front. So he, he, he actually forced Chris to give him the line there, which meant exactly. allowed him to it was, make that that's place. A, that's a textbook move. Uh, but these Absolutely. guys still... Uh, G Gary Lennon, Jimmy Hughes, Pedro Amo seem to be locked, th locked in their horns. But now there seems to be a battle back here that's kind of broken off from those guys. People Rodriguez, Darren Adams, Simon Shepard, Heinz Petzold, and Chris Butcher now slowly closing in on this group. But remember, we saw Jacobs go off. He's back in 16th. As down the inside, 
We've got, who is that? Uh, Darren Adams. That's Darren Adams. Inside of Pipo Rodriguez. He's through. Book it. Darren Adams into P11. Looking back to the front of what's going on here. You see, I think Davis is now, looks about for third. Davis is now back in the slipstream. Right on the rear bumper of Simon Kielov to head through towards turn one. They're extremely fast. Right, left section here. Davis is going to try and look to the outside. And how much, how confident he's feeling after last time when he got forced onto the grass and put a wheel on there and almost lost the back end of the car. But they, they get, go on the brakes towards turns three, four, and five. And Talbot's just in the background there and support in fifth place. So it's currently precision one, two, three, THR four and five. Monroe is now back in sixth in the fourth precision car. But remember, because he switched teams from ice cold to precision mid-season, he can only score points for himself as a driver. Any points he scores will not count towards the total for precision. Uh, and of course, seventh is Chris Hack in there now. Now we've got this fantastic back in eighth. Three-way scrap between Amaral, Lennon and Hughes. They're rounding out the top ten as we are on as we, as we work lap nine of 15. Eight laps in the books. Still got another seven to go, including this one. Yeah, and I mean, the track is starting to heat up. We're at 35 degrees Celsius track temperature, and these guys are definitely be starting to eat up these tires. Let's do a quick rundown while we're uh, while we're going through here. People Rodriguez back 11th, 12th, Darren Adams. They've had the back and forth. I was watching their names swap back and forth on the timing while we were following the leaders. So keep an eye uh, on the timing there. We'll try to keep track of this battle here. Simon Shepard, 13th. Petzold, 14th. Butcher back in 15th. And they're slowly making their way to this group. And remember, we saw Jacobs go off. So if these two can get there, we got a nice battle coming up. Jacobs, 16th. Uh, back to Jay Agi in, in 17th. Another train of cars. Jay Agi, Nick Hughes, Jimmy's brother uh, in 18th. James Gahagan in 19th. Matt Richards in 20th. Ben Richards in 21st. So brothers close by. Luca Pecklatch 22nd. Thomas Matazewski in 23rd. Now I was surprised to see him so far back considering how quick he was in practice. But uh, he's then followed by Scott Sovic in 24th. And just behind them, you've got Jonathan Ockerklint and uh, Robert Powell battling very tightly here as Ockerklint makes a move to take 25th. Followed by Demelin and uh, Ryan Callen and Jim Flanagan are our two DNFs for the race. So, unfortunate for Callen. But uh, as we make our way back roundabout to the front of the grid, it's Keithley, Lordson, basically one car, one car running out there. One tenth between them. Kilo. Uh, just kind of holding third steady. Davis trying his best, but Talbrick slowly closing the lead, closing that gap. So, I mean, the most exciting segment we've got here is these guys here and this group in behind. As you see, the, how many times have they swapped positions, Scott? Uh, quite a, well, not too many. They've been in very close proximity. They've kind of stayed at the same. We've now got Jimmy Hughes and Gary Lennon going side by side for nine. Oh, contact at a high speed Whoa. moment there. Whoa, that wow. was extremely close. And, oh, but, but look at that. But Lennon just keeps holds the line around the outside. A little bit on the on the gravel on the outside. This will now put, give Hughes the run he needs. And the walk racing clear is now going to try and move to the inside down towards the right hander. Lennon will ha probably have to give him the line, but he's going to stick it oh, around the outside. Too much curb. Yeah, too much curb, and that put he sideways and out of shape, which actually allowed the, the ice car racing driver to hold on to the ninth place. And then behind them, very quickly, if we look at them, the huge snake that's forming now. So they've got side by side behind, that's for 30. That was Petzold and Simon Shepard, and he's now got Chris Butcher on his outside as they run down towards turns 14 and 15. Butcher with a fantastic run and sticks it round the outside. Now he's got the run, a fantastic straight line speed. Look at Sovic, Thomas Jacobs, so trying to make it three wide down towards 14. Oh, but it through. hasn't worked just now. Chris Butcher has pushed his way through on Simon Shepard, and he now sets his sights on Heinz Petzold. Um, Scott, Chris Butcher is, uh, has made his way up through the field. He helped his teammate get that pole position by offering him a bit of a toe, possibly sacrificing his own race uh, or race starting position. So he's making his way up. He's up to 14th, uh, and he's looking after trying to get to a hold of Heinz Petzold now. We've got uh, Rodriguez and Adams going side by side almost into turns one and two. And, but the young Portuguese driver oh, holding oh, on. Tolberg? Tolberg just dropped. Tolberg is off. Oh, Tolberg's Tolberg in the has bias. gone off the track. Second place in the championship has gone off the track. Let's see if we can see what happened there. I don't think we're going to do it. Oh, no, I'm looking at my replay. Yeah, get 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 us a, get us a play by play on that as we follow along and let's have a look and see if we can see any damage. This is a this is a big story here. Have a look well, and see see what you can see for us. Well, I just looked on the replay. Looks there. Well, Tolberg was in very close proximity to. His teammate, and all of a sudden, it looked as though he just lost the car under braking. Now, I'm not suggesting. So, you're not quite sure, Scott, is what you're saying. I think we've lost Scott there for the moment, but uh, let's get but back no, to. I'm the... here. Okay, I'm sorry. Here. So, I just I have to use. Um, I'm using both control, control buttons when I push the talk, so. Okay. Uh, but looking at it, I just have a look quickly. It, just, it does seem to me, if. Just trying to fast forward it. 
And to me, it looks like Talbot lost, lost the car under braking. I think as, to as Toby moved across. I'm looking back at it now. And will they both go into the braking zone? <laughs> it's tough. I think Talbot just took a bit too much curb on the inside into turns four and five. And that's unsettled the back end of the THR Clio. And that's put him into the gravel. He's down in tenth now. But, uh, and now trying to pull away from the battle for length between Rodriguez and Adams. But that's rather unfortunate. He's a second ever championship. He needs all the points he can get to prevent Kilo oh, from getting away. Oh, you know away. what? I, I actually just looked at it myself, and uh, he caught the anti-cut. He yeah, was too that, far that to the inside. It, yeah. The anti-cut lifted the back left higher off the ground. And uh, when you were under braking, and that back end is free, is you lose all the weight on the back end, you are going around. So that is a very uncharacteristic mistake coming from... Uh, the driver, which we call the Iceman at times, uh, he has uh, dropped himself back into 10th position, so he's going to need to make up some, some time here uh, as best as he can. But uh, Chris Hack and John Monroe seem to be locked in this battle forever as we stare at the uh, back of the Precision Motorsports car of John Monroe follow while we're on board with Chris Hack. Uh, is he going to try to make a move? He's going to have to because he's been kind of just stuck in tow of him for a bit, but it seems that uh, Chris... Chris struggles on entry and John struggles on exit. So that kind of just kind of counteracts each other. Of course, whoever's quick on it, quick on the entry struggles on the exit and vice versa. As you said, so that's going to be quite a, a, a battle into the last couple of laps as we go into it now. Um, impressively, Pedro Amaral in seventh place from his first race in Division One, putting in a fantastic performance for the for the Portuguese racing team. So they're going to have a, a field day after this race anyway. So fantastic effort for him to be ahead of Gary Lennon, of course, a, a race winner in the past as well, and also Jimmy Hughes. Talborg is slowly starting to catch up to these guys back up to the rear bumper of both Hughes and Gary Lennon. As we now look back to the front very quickly and still Keithy Larrison. They've been doing this ever since they started to ever since they started to break away. Just these to just start just to keep themselves in the slipstream. Oh, and Chris Hack's trying to make a move here now on the on John Monroe, but I don't know if he's going to be able to do it. He's cr he's trying as John Monroe defends a little bit on the in for the inside. Chris is going to have to try to get creative to come by. But now I want to get your opinion. Do you think Lordson will attempt to move? It's going to be tough. I mean, obviously, obviously Keith is in in the front. Oh, Keith is the team leader. He's taken two victories this season. Of course, he'll want a third to try and strengthen his championship lead. He, I think, also what's also key as well is that now that Talborg's down in 10th place now, he's raised as the points! As Monroe, sorry, Monroe got very sideways through turn five, but he managed to bring the front end of the round course with the tried and tested technique of stamping the throttle and counter steering as you usually get in a front wheel drive car, but I'm not sure. I mean, Larrison has been pretty much on Keithley's back bumper for, for pretty much now the majority of the race, and we've, we've seen this so many times from the precision guys where they do just like to run in formation and not do too much to try and attack each other. Um, of course, we are now into the second half of the season where these guys, they can't really you know, race like this for too much longer in, in the next couple of rounds because if it comes down to it where we've got Keithley and then Keylov in there as well but they're battling amongst each other on track and then if, if by some reason Larrison and maybe Munro get themselves involved in this fight as well it will get to a point where they'll have to say right, no more team racing, gloves are off boys we're going to have to race as just as drivers uh, a driver against driver rather than against as a team so I don't think, I, personally I don't think there is going to be a pass because I think that Larrison's had his two victories. Keithley needs as, as many points as he can get. And, of course, the fact, as we said, Talborg's down in 10th. He made the mistake, but he's now in 9th now because he's just, he just popped up past Jimmy Hughes. I've just seen it flick on the standings. Um, that's only going to help Keithley's course further. So we'll have to wait and see. I don't think there is going to be a pass, but, as we said, a lot can happen in sim racing, and it usually does. Well, and that's, that's the whole thing. I mean, we've got... Uh, well, Lordson, I think, as they crossed the line, they were actually 0, .0, .0 apart. So the battles that we can count on for the end of this race is we're on the penultimate lap, Monroe and Kak. What's going to happen there? Amaral's cleared himself up to seventh. Now you've got Talberg is up to ninth and now closing in on Lennon. Jimmy Hughes has got gapped because Talberg probably made a, a fairly, you know, a fairly aggressive move just because of the frustration that levels that sets in for making a small mistake. So Talberg looking to make up another spot. I don't know if he'll quite get to Amaral, but he possibly could. Uh, these is, this is what we have to look forward to at the end of this race. But people, Rodriguez now leading this massive train of cars, which consists of Darren Adams, Heinz Petzl, Chris Butcher, Shepard, and Jacobs. Um, so these guys will battle hard right to the end of this race. But uh, the big question is, will teammates Keithley and Lordson uh, enter into battle on this final lap? And we will find out because we will be starting that final lap in just a short moment here. As down the inside goes 
Tallberg not quite going to do it on Gary Lennon. Gary Lennon fighting off hard because he's saying, hey, look, I've earned this spot. You made the mistake. You stay back. And, oh, just up front, we've got, who is that? Dom and Rowe, Chris Hack. No, sorry. That was, uh, yeah, that was uh, a little bit. So Hack's gone through. Hack's got through to fifth. Hack is through into fifth position. I, I thought I saw something happen in there. So Hack has finally made his move as Tallberg then passes Lennon for eighth. Hack has now moved into the fifth position at the start of the final lap. But the question is, will Lortzen side by side down in the turn one teammates? This is the, this is the young buck racing against the team owner. Jack Keithley, can he make the move and can he make it cleanly without causing any any trouble? So obviously it is it is on. Alexander wants to take this race. Oh clean. hack! What's up with the hack? No, so so I thought that must be a glitch on the timing screen because I saw him jump to the top of the times and start oh, to fall down. Oh, Alexander's through. Oh, sorry, that was Keithley. That was Keithley. <laughs> <laughs> they, they all look the same. That's it's they easy, all look the same to me. No, it, it was it was just I saw a car a car coming up over the curb and I lo and I should have noticed that it said Jack and not Alex. <laughs> Well, well, as uh, whatever happened to Chris, Monroe's got back through into fifth place. So at the moment, they're first, second, third, and fifth. Although, Hack's now got a great run on the exit of turn five. Will, he, will they go side by side? Not quite. But Hack got a good drive on the exit of that corner. They're up towards that very fast right hand that's been catching a few drivers out all race long and all week, race weekend long, in fact. Now then, as they wind their way through, Monroe has the lead. Of course, that's, that's him in the shot. The, obviously, the grey and yellow precision car ahead of the black and pink Call and Novo machine of... Chris Hack, they're coming up to the end of the end of the lap now, and Larrison just quickly back at the front. Sorry to switch the cameras quickly, but Larrison is right there, and he's going to try and move on the inside. They're going to try and pull side by side, maybe. They are always going to go side by side. Keith again defensive. Larrison dummies to the inside, but he has to bob back in. Oh, he's oh, he gives Keith the edge. They're Cross side by side up. Side by side up towards the final corner, but no, Larrison thinks better of it and says, right, that's the fun and game's over. Have to yep. settle for second. Keith is going to be the race winner. <laughs> he's like, I tried. Oh, oh, what is this? To the line! To the line! For, formation finish. That's what it is. Formation finish. Yeah, for, for, the, for the picture. Yeah, for the team um, photo. So, just, yeah. yeah, Jack Keithley finishing first. Lordson in second for precision. Kilo in third. Davis in fourth, our pole sitter. Fifth place is going to be Chris just Hatt, John, John Monroe. Monroe. Just to round out. So, th four precision in the top five. Chris Hack in sixth. Pedro Amaral is probably ecstatic with a seventh place finish after just coming up to server one. Tallberg in, in eighth. Lennon in ninth, Hughes in 10th, 11th is Adams, Petzold 12th, People Rodriguez ended up falling back through that group and ended up in 13th, they'll be looking to make up for that, Chris Butcher 14th, Simon Shepard in 15th, Thomas Jacobs 16th, Jay Adji 17th, 18th is James Gahagan, Nick Hughes in 19th, Matt Richards in 20th. We will be right back and we will be starting up with the second qualification for the second race, so don't go anywhere, we'll be right back.
Inside SimRacing.tv, the fastest show on the internet. Sim racing news and reviews since 2007, with new shows every week. GamePod, the ultimate race rig for those serious about sim racing puts you in the driver's seat with all the controls at your fingertips. Be number one on the road, in the race, in the game. GamePod, the choice of champions. Hello everybody, we are back live here from the Most Autodrome. We have completed the first race of the sixth round here of the Tom on Slow Cold Cleo series. Uh, we saw some great action. We did see another Precision 1-2. Uh, actually, sorry, another Precision 1-2-3. Um, but we saw some great battling through the middle of the field. And I mean, it's nice to see uh, some good clean racing. I mean, we saw from uh, the likes of Gary Lennon, Jimmy Hughes, Darren Adams, Rodriguez. I mean, what did you, th what did you t take of all that, Scott? Um, well, definitely that uh, in the break that we've had between the two weeks that uh, some teams and drivers have really stepped up their game of course um, I think one of the drivers of that race was definitely Pedro Amaral of course it was his first race in, in server one and he managed to qualify, qualify himself not, not only in the top ten but he finished there as well he was seventh place and he was Certainly would be happy about that, the Portuguese driver. Um, also, great scrap between Chris Hack and John Munro. It's, it, it's great to see Chris up there as well because I think he's one of those drivers where on his day, uh, when everything clicks for him together, as it seems to have done this weekend, he is a pretty quick driver. And, he can, and he show, he's, capable, he's shown that he is capable and he can race with the big boys at the front, like the guys at Precision and, and THR. And you saw him at, with, with the initial train of six cars we had, of course, of Davis, Talborg and the four Precision boys. He was there and he was giving them some headaches right at, the back, right at the back of that train. He was kind of giving one or two issues for Talborg and also John Monroe throughout that race near the end. Um, so fantastic driving as well from the guys outside of the top 10, guys like Pipe Rodriguez, Darren Adams, Heinz Petzold, all those guys, Jimmy Hughes, all those guys who are battling around, and Gary Lennon as well. They all put on a fantastic show behind the top 10 because as the battle started to really kind of win their way out out of the system in terms of the top five and, and around that area, the battles, as we said, and the, more, the air time was more given to the guys behind behind the top 10 because that's where the main kind of the scraps were going on behind track. And it was fantastic entertaining racing. Um, of course... Precision are obviously going to go into the second qualifying session and into the second race as probably favourites to take the victory. Whether or not we're going to get another, another pole from Davis, we don't know. But one thing we always tend to get is a surprise pole sitter in the second qualifying session for most of the races. And I'm wondering if we're going to, if it's going to be one of those race weekends where we are going to get someone unexpected hitting the top spot for race two. Well, we were going to find out very shortly here um, as we now have the second qualifying starting. Um, we saw the last session, we saw it was... You know, the, the, the quicker guys seem to have waited to the very end, including Toby Davis, um, who snuck in a lap using a bit of a draft from his teammate Chris Butcher. So uh, we'll, it'll be interesting to see if now Precision takes that um, in stride and, and goes and tries to maybe steal that pole position so they don't have to, I guess, say put up with such a fight. Because you know that if at any moment if Toby's up there um, in the race 
anything can happen uh, and, and you could you know to be going for a pass and maybe drop a wheel get sideways so you want to try to make it as easy as you can as a team and maybe just have a quick meeting say hey guys do you want to try to do a bit of drafting this session just to just get a, a little bit of a toe for that little edge and I mean it's all about I mean we're talking a game of inches here but Kilo has already decided he's opted to go out there and take his first lap without any teammate or any help as Davis now is lining up to head out onto the track so we've got a couple of big guns headed out there early uh, we've got Jimmy Hughes out on the track as well, Darren Adams, people Rodriguez, Chris Butcher. We'll see where these guys slot in as they get going. But uh, we're right on board with Kilo as he starts his lap. And uh, Scott, you can give us a call here. Yeah, it's Hick here comes Simon Kilo onto the straight then. And uh, this will be his qualifier, of course, one, earlier than we usually like to see him. But of course, Toby Davis has made his his run early as we normally does in most of the races we've seen him. So up towards turns one and two, and I'll quickly jump on board on my server view then. So roughly running around about sixth gear, 210 Ks to this very fast first sector into turn to this long curve. And then you have to get under brakes here. Very tight for turns three and then four, watching the anti-cut over the curb. And he's putting on a fantastic run so far. I'm just gonna quickly just get back on board with him if I can very quickly. And he is now heading down to, through this very fast hairpin of turn five and six. And through the kinks as he heads down towards that very fast right hand. Of course, a lot of cars have been kicking up a, a, a lot of dust on that section all race all week, race weekend long so far. He uses a lot of the inside curb there, a little bit of oversteer. He uses, uses all the exit curb as well. And he's not going to be the first one to set a time, I don't think. There's a couple of cars already out there. Yeah, I'm going to have a look here. You you just follow with Simon. I'm going to or here. I'm going to follow through the grid because Simon's still got a little ways to go. As we hop on board, I don't think anyone else is further up in a lap because he seemed to be rushed out there. Everyone's still going. Chris Butcher will be the first to set a lap here, I believe, followed by Simon Shepard. Uh, as Chris Butcher crosses the line, he's going to cross the line at a 141. Two. So actually, Chris Butcher improves big time. He was a full second off his lap time last time around. So he, he's a full second faster this time around. So let's see who else yeah. might have anything for that. Well, Kilov, I'm just saying, Kilov is already a tenth and a half up on Butcher's time. A little bit wide on the exit, kicking up some dust. But how is the man who finished third in race one going to do for qualifying? Answer is he's actually only just quicker by just about half a tenth. So 141.194. A little bit surprising he wasn't quicker, but he is currently provisional pole. We'll see exactly what the rest of the field have in store for the course. We're going to have to watch for Toby Davis because he is should be the man that's on a hot lap at the moment. And we'll have to keep track of exactly what's, what he's up to at the moment. He is on, he's at 37 seconds, so I, remind me to get to him as Gary Lennon's going to cross the line and see where he's going to slot in in this grid. 141.6, so he goes provisionally to third. So we need to get back to Toby Davis, who is out there uh, around about 50 seconds. So he's about halfway through this lap. Darren Adams slots into third position. As uh, It seems that we've got more drivers getting out earlier this time than we did the last session, where it was a, just a mad dash to the end of that session as Toby Davis now goes purple. But uh, one, uh, being only up 1.131, that's only going to slot him into a low, a low 141, where he was at a 140.7 the last qualifying session. Now, and he did also get... A the toe again from Chris Butcher so that was pretty key and uh, also I did see two of the precision cars they did go out pretty much nose to tail so they're going to try some slip streaming as well so uh, the tactic which worked for THR obviously precision I thought we'll have a bit of that as well and I think it was one of the cars with Larrett I'm pretty sure I think it was Larrett and Keithy going nose to tail once again so those two are going to see a lot more of each other here comes Toby Davis then can he make it two poles from two in Most here the answer to that question is he goes across the line yes he does so he goes top provisionally by almost a tenth and a half, a 41.047. That's some three tenths off what he managed in the first qualifying session, but he is currently still top of the pile, and we'll have a look and see exactly the rest of the cars that are going to be coming through. We haven't got any more of the top cars out just yet on a time. We haven't set a time just yet. We've got uh, Keithy, and, it is Keithy and Larrett, and they've distanced, distanced themselves a little bit on track. So it'll be Keithy who go, goes across the line to, st to start the clock first ahead of Larrettson. And nobody's Monroe's quite on a hot too. And nobody's on a hot lap yet. They're all just out there doing their warm-up laps. So we're gonna wait and see who we who we can get on the timer first to find out who's gonna slot in there. So Lauritsen, so Keith Lee is gonna cross first. Lauritsen is gonna cross second. So it's gonna these two guys will be the first to set their time. So we'll just follow along with these guys as they're gonna uh, they're gonna be the two to follow. So Keith Lee will be looking to take get down into the 140s and uh, dethrone Toby Davis. And uh, as well will uh, Lauritsen. I see Keith is on our lap, of course, and, La and Lauritsen. 
and as Ryan Callan enters the game. Munro is just about to start his lap. Chris Hack is also starting his lap. He's lap two as well. He's coming through turns two and three. Pedro Amaral starting a hot lap as well. And Talborg just at the end of the final sector. So he's going to start his lap two. So a lot of big guns here out there to try and set their times. This is the time to do it. Now, in this first sector, Keithley's up by six hundredths. Whereas Larrix is down by eight thousandths. So currently it is Keithley who set the fastest first sector of anyone so far in this qualifying session. They sweep through the very fast right-hander using all the curb on the exit. And looks like Larrix using a bit more than Keithley did. About towards the end of the second section they'll go. It's underneath the bridge here. Let's go around. He's only up by one thousandth. So Keith has only found one thousandth of a second. And oh, look at this. Pedro Amaral is off. Pedro Amaral has also gone purple. So you got four drivers right now. And four. Monroe as well. Monroe. So we have four drivers currently that are lapping in the first sector faster than Toby Davis. So this could be interesting. Pedro Amaral, dark horse maybe? Quite possibly. He did well to finish seventh. In that uh, Talbert first also set. purple. So Monroe is now no longer purple. No. Neither is Amaral. So Keithley, Lauritsen, and, and, and Talberg now all have a chance at this pole position. The question is who's going to take it? Keithley will draw across the line first. Let's see how Keithley does. Keithley coming up to cross the line, trying to take the pole away from Toby Davis. He yes, does he is. 140.88. Lauritsen takes it away from him right after it. A 140.763. Now, now we have Jesper Talberg still on track. At where is Talberg? Talberg is there. He is dead even with Lordson's time. So he is. Ex oh no, sorry. He's, uh, he's exactly the dead same time as Alexander Lordson. So yep. all he needs to do is he, if he can maintain this pace, he will be very close to Lordson, possibly a little better, but he will definitely be ahead of Keithley. Now it's all a matter of how he can handle this last section of the track. But it looks like he may, he should be able to. He should be a shoe in to, to slot in ahead of his teammate Toby Davis. Just see John Monroe and Pedro Amaral slot into 7th and 8th respectively. We'll see exactly where they... Talbot's going to come across the line. I'll see if I can pick him up on my screen. Well, here he is. Talberg is now coming out of the final corner. Talberg is the only man who can take down Lauritsen and Keithley. Can he do it? He crosses the line. No. Falls into 4th place just behind his teammate with a 141.058. A very good time, but just not enough to get in between the precision guys. So that's going to be that's going to be that for the Tigers. Callan is actually going to set a lap time this time around. Callan. Hallelujah. Zevsky, <laughs> oh, Callan has gone purple. Callan is one oh, wow. up. So the man that didn't even get a timeout last time around in the game pod car. Callan may, may be the dark horse here. As Callan is uh, is going to be, he's, he's just past the first sector. We've got um, Thomas Matazewski. Let's see where he's going to slot in with Jake. We've got Jacobs, Jimmy Hughes, still not out. Maybe perhaps maybe he took, maybe he uh, bounced off his lap as uh, Matazewski falls into 15th place. But Jimmy Hughes not going to be setting a lap time here, as Thomas Jacobs still is out there. And, and he's Callan's gonna... gone. Okay, Callan's no longer purple. He's, he's dropped now ten, off, off by a tenth and a half now in that second sector. So it seems to be all, all the kind of work which the Precision Boys did in that second sector seems to have paid off because Cal no one can really get close to him in that second sector too much. Uh, Callan's now heading down towards the final two corners. And uh, how much more time has he got left in him? He's, he's pretty much at the bottom of the times right now, having not set a time. And yeah, was, we're going to see here is because he's coming through the penultimate corner. Uh, you see, I, I haven't seen anyone else use that curb on the final corner there. Um, it seems to get the car a little unsteady and you lose momentum exiting because as he crosses the line, Callan is going to slot a new seventh, so respectable in the race. He's in between Butcher and Hack and he's ahead of Monroe. So he's got uh, a number of fast guys that were all there. So we're going to be back in a moment. We'll give you a rundown of where everyone lines up and uh, give you an, an idea of what we can expect to see here coming into the first race or the second race of today's round. See you soon.
Hello everybody and we are back live from Most Autodrome here for the second race of this sixth round of the halfway mark of this championship in the Tom Onslow Cole Clio series. Um, we are going to go through a quick rundown of the grid. Scott's going to let you know where everyone lines up so you, so you can know what to expect. Thank you very much, Keith. So here's the grid then for race two of round six here at Most Autodrome. And it's Alexander Larrison taking pole position with an all-precision front row. He'll, he'll start alongside team leader and championship leader Jack Keithy in second. It's an all-THR set row two with Toby Davis and Jesper Talborg third and fourth. Simon Kilov in the third precision car is fifth alongside Chris Butcher. Improved qualifying than, he, than what he managed in, Q, in the first qualifying session for race one and sixth. Ryan Callan, again, also improvements too. He's, he starts seventh to start alongside Chris Hack on row four in eighth. John Monroe down in ninth, back on row five alongside Pedro Amaral, who continues to impress on his first server one, first division one race here in the Tom Onslow Cole Clios. Outside of the top ten, Pipe Rodriguez just 11th ahead of Thomas Jacobs. More improvements from him in the sixth axis, sixth axis car. Then row seven is going to be Darren Adams and Heinz Petzold, an all-core seventh row. Row eight is going to be Gary Lennon and Simon Shepard in another core racing car. Row 9 is going to be Thomas Matazewski, who again, it seems to have lost some of his pace from his early, from the early stage of this race weekend in practice and in, in qualifying for race 1. Luca Pecklage will start alongside him in 18th. Row 10 is going to be Jay Agi and Nick Hughes for Surreal Illusions. Row 11 will be Ben Richards for Aerostream and Robert Powell for Core. Row 12 will be Matt Richards for Aerostream and James Cahagan for Essex Online Racing. And then at the back of the grid is going to be the last few cars it will be Jim Flanagan and Lukas Demelin on row 13. And then we've got Jordan Osserklint in 27th for Optimum. 28th is his teammate Scott Sovic, again for Optimum Sim Racing. And 29th at the back of the grid is Jimmy Hughes for Walk Racing with no time. Yes, and uh, we're going to uh, quickly do a spot break for our sponsors, uh, GamePod, Team Hard. Uh, you know you know the drill. Uh, just have a look, check them out, make sure you like them on Facebook, and anywhere you can, social media is a great thing. But uh, we will be right back in just a quick moment, so hold tight. GamePod, the ultimate race rig for those serious about sim racing puts you in the driver's seat with all the controls at your fingertips. Be number one on the road, in the race, in the game. GamePod, the choice of champions. InsideSimRacing.tv, the fastest show on the internet. Sim racing news and reviews since 2007, with new shows every week. We are back live from Most Autodrome here for the Tom Onslow Cole Clio Series. Uh, we are here for the sixth round, the second race of this event. And uh, just a big reminder to all of the drivers who, uh, or all the viewers who are new to this, the winner of this championship will get a test drive, full all expenses paid, um, in a VW Cup car. Compliments of Team Hard, Tony Gillum Racing, um, and this is a, a fantastic once-in-a-lifetime opportunity that these guys are racing for to potentially, for no money out of pocket, get a chance to be in a real race car uh, when uh, this type of racing is so expensive just in general and you can take a hobby and turn it into something that could potentially be more than that. So um, it's, a, it's very exciting to watch this championship unfold. Uh, we also have a, a bit of a farewell at the end of this race to say goodbye to these cars that you're looking at. 
Yeah, as as we mentioned just at the beginning, of course, this is this is the last time that you will see these 2008 shaped Clio's on track. Of course, we've had them since the very inception of the Clio series, back when it was the virtual Clio series, and uh, back in season one. Of course, back in season one, we did actually race here at Most, and there were wins for um, at least for Jesper Talborg, and I believe also Ryan Callan as well. So victories for them. And uh, it, it is it, it is sad, of course, to see these cars go because they are fantastic little machines, and of course they have. Over the three and a half years we've seen them race in the four, across these four different four different seasons, uh, you know we have seen some fantastic racing. It's brought some of the best moments in TPS history, of course, and uh, of course. But unfortunately, it, it is their swan song in for the second race. But uh, of course, it's only fitting that we that we send them out in the correct way. And, and the only way that we know how at TPS to uh, to do a send off is to go racing. So of course yeah. we're going <laughs> to so so, so so we're definitely going to give the give these cars a proper send off and say goodbye to the uh, old Clio. Uh, with a hopefully a fantastic race that uh, that is fitting of the the kind of car it is, of course, because of from the next race onwards, of course, when we go to Croft uh, onwards for the last four rounds of the season, we say hello to the brand new 2013 Clear, which we showed you a picture of the being in the championship. And as the cars come to the grid, then for the fight, these these oh these Clears come to the grid for one last time. We get ready to bid farewell to them, uh, like we said, but hopefully in the best possible way, and that is to take them racing uh, for one last time. Yeah, this is going to be it. We're going to see them line up. These these cars will be sent off with a few renders done by Darren Adams to show race winners um, uh, of you, of this season in the 2008 cars. But we're going to see these guys line up as we see the lights go red. We're going to wait for them to go out to see the last race here at the sixth round. And away they go. Green, green, green. And away they go. Alexander Lorentzen gets off to a nice clean start with Keithley following in tow. And in behind him, Toby Davis just lots in as you've got the, the field lined up almost line of stern as they head into this very quick right left combination but uh, Lauritsen getting a great start but Davis you know him he's very antsy doesn't like to wait doesn't want to give these guys an opportunity to pull away as a team Davis in third going to be looking to make a move Keithley defends knows it's coming he gets a little nudge Toby Davis is going to try to cross back over and he's done it what a move <coughs> excuse me <coughs> excellent stuff from there from uh David, unfortunately, uh, I think he's had a bit of a coughing fit. Apologies for that. But as we watch, I was watching back behind. Fantastic start from Chris Butcher off the grid. He was seventh, eighth on the grid, sixth on the grid. He's up to fifth already. And also Ryan Callas managed to push himself up through the field. He's now up to sixth. And uh, given the front four, few some headaches, the man who really got shuffled down was tap was Keel as Davis goes wide on the exit of the grass uh, through the, over the gravel. This has put Keithy right on his back bumper as they head down towards under the, under the end of the second sector. And we, we've already we've already lost Scott Sovic in one of the Optimus Sim Racing cars. So we're down to 25. Uh, out of the 26 cars that started this race, 29 cars that started this race, so we're down to 28. So it's Larrison from Davis, then Keithy. Tarbos going with him, and look at the pace that Butch is showing in these opening stages. They head down towards the turns 14 and 15. And also looking back as well, looks to me as if Keelov has got up up past Ryan Callan. As oh, what now is been, this? He's cars headaches. sideways up in the background as we, as we watch the whole field drape through here for the first time here. Um, Davis managing to squeeze himself in between Keithley, but now this this is a different sight from what we saw in race one, Scott. We got it is. Alexander leading, and you've got now three three THR drivers in him in this midst here. Look because look what look what's happened. We've got John Monroe back, Kilo back, and now uh, Talberg is now going to be fighting hard, and he needs to make up some some points here because Keithley's the guy he's got to catch after making that mistake. But I mean, Keithley has been so. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? So perfect this season with not making major mistakes uh, that it's going to be hard for him to make up this time. It's oh, oh Butcher goes wide. He's gone wide, and Kilo makes his way through. Another thing that was exactly what Tabor did in the, in the first race. Just caught the anti cut on the inside, and you know, and look at that. Look at my row. Look at my row. Just sending up the inside of Cal. The things I know what I'll do. I see Butcher's having some problems. I'll sneak past him as well. So that's two places he's made up in the space of one corner. Fantastic opportunistic driving from the young Scotsman John Monroe. He's into sixth. That means that Butcher's down to seventh and Cal has been shuffled down to eighth. R rest of the top ten, we've got Chris Hack in ninth. Peter Rodriguez up a spot from an, he starts on the grid in tenth. Thomas Jacobs is eleventh. Where's Pedro Amaral? Down in twelfth. He started somewhere roughly around the end of the top ten. So he's now dropped back all the way back. But up at the front, and look at this. And you can see, well, Larrison's starting to just streak away, spread eagle himself from the rest of the pack. But behind, it's Keithley that's the, that's the log jam at the moment because Keithley is bringing the two precision cars of Davis and Talbot and Kielov with him. And just behind them, that's that is looking at 
it's three white and Butcher's got back past both Callan and also Monroe. So we've got Butcher back into sixth. Callan's got back past up Monroe to seventh and, and the Scotsman's down to eighth. The Precision Cars currently run first, second, fifth, fifth. and eighth. And they're mixed in there with the THR guys and Ryan Callan. Well, this is quite the battle so far, and it's a little different than what we saw in the first race. Uh, however, Kilo is now right on the back of Talberg, and it was uh, Keith Lee Lauritsen and Ke uh, sorry, Keith Lee Lauritsen and then Kilo in one, two, three in race one. So they'll be looking to repeat that. But Davis and Talberg will try to have an answer for these guys this race. But just a little ways back, Butcher, Callan, Monroe, all very, very tight battling here. Because Butcher, uh, Butcher is um, just really, really pushing here uh, after making that slight mistake. But look, again, this is a nice, nice train of cars that you're looking at as they come through here. As, uh, as Callan goes a little bit oh. wide, Monroe's going to try to squeeze his way through. Can he do it? He's not going to. He's got the inside. Looks like he's got the move done. Callan holds the outside. Now he's got the inside. Monroe going to squeeze him down. Not quite going to make contact. Monroe has now held back and got the spot back back, but Callan is fighting for this, and he's not going to do it. Now Callan's under attack by Chris Hack. Chris Hack now is making his way through, and Callan looks like he's just being beaten, just being gang-beaten here by this group of Clio drivers. You have to watch what you said there, because you almost, almost said something else there, didn't you? Yeah. You have to be very careful how you picked your words there. But look at that, Hack has got through, as we were, as we were joking about that. And also, I saw in the background, I saw a car go off at turns 4 and 5, and I can tell you, that is Matt Richards. He's, I actually saw some flames underneath the, the, the bottom of his clear, so that is an engine failure for the Aerostream driver. As now we're looking, Cal's defending! Look at this, he's got Hack on the inside, and Hack's almost gone too deep. Hack's look at very deep. on the inside Callan too. Callum passes two! Callum goes by two! And he takes the spot. This is quite the battle we've got here. As you've got Callan leading just a, a, a gaggle of cars here. As you see people Rodriguez move by. Toby Davis, fastest lap at a 140.874. That's the fastest lap we've seen in race conditions so far. And, and look at how Hack is pushing. Look at it. He's literally almost, almost, it's almost like the, like the tandem draft. He's bump drafting down the front straight. It's fantastic, like NASCAR. Oh, sorry, i got to get ahead to this. If we can, Davis, Davis was trying to make a move by, uh, um, uh, so, sorry, Davis was trying to make a move by Keith, but he couldn't quite do oh! it. one and two. Oh, sorry, 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 Keith. Callum went straight, out, straight across over the the inside of turns four and five. Just missed the anti cuts. I think there was a nudge from from either Rodriguez or either Hack. I think it must have been Hack because Hack has dropped back now to the clutches of several other cars. Now we've got Rodriguez running wide, sliding off at turn five. He's now dropped back behind, behind Chris Hack, and they're all scra scrapping it out amongst each other. Callan's now just started to break away, but Callan so almost threw it away there in turns four and five. Very close not to lose it altogether, but he's now in eighth place and chasing off John Monroe, and that's Chris Hack goes wide on the exit of that very fast right-hander. But uh, sorry to interrupt there, I just I saw, I, I, I had a feeling there was something that was going to happen. I just cut to Callan, just yeah, he got the but, nudge but and was spearing back, off the grass. Back at the front though, we got Keith, Keith Lee is uh, making small mistakes. As I, I keep noticing over the corner of my eye that Davis is trying everything he can. But uh, I'll keep an eye on this battle on my other screen. But the, the battle that we were just watching, I can't, I, there's, there's nothing like this. Look at the sea of cars as you look back from these drivers. There's there's ten cars here, ten cars here all battling three <laughs> wide three wide coming through here they're sending these cars off in in style there's going to be nothing left of these bodies by the end of this race little nudges here and there but the new bodies have already been shipped they're going to be here for ne the next round which is in four weeks. Well, we said we wanted to give these give these cars a proper send off, and what a send off we're given! This is fantastic racing. These guys oh, look at really this. are doing this 2008. So Justin, oh. Davis and Keith Lee, uh, Davis tried around the outside, he's not going to do it, Keith Lee holds the inside, that's a very risky move, Ke Toby Davis is leaving nothing on the table for this championship, oh and see Davis gets a little squirrely using that curb, but he's got a good exit, he's going to close right up on the back of Keith Lee, and he's going to try to find a way by, oh he looks down the inside, contact, oh. he sends him wide, Toby Davis squeezes his way through, we're going to have another look at that, I got to say that Davis looked like he had the overlap, Headed through that corner. Let's pull this up here as Davis. Is it look? Is he going to let him by? No. I no, think he might he's do. just trying to. He might just be letting him by. I think he is. Yeah. Um, I think it's just simply because that he's got. He has taken a couple of penalties in the last race and doesn't feel like earning it in a sour way. But we need to look at that so for ourselves. I would like to know what you think of this back at home. Well, just just uh, just sorry, just watching the replay. Davis has got back underneath Keith into second place, and they're still going side by side on the exit. If you got the replay up, of course, it was a pretty tough thing, but they're swapping this places. Is, this is, oh, look at this. Sorry, See, sorry. Oh, what it is, is he's dead. 
you know what, it, he was, it didn't have the overlap. So unfortunately, Davis, uh, ill-gotten move, but now he's taking it back in a legitimate way as Talbot. Now you got Talbot. Where, Look at the Keith strike. Lee? Look at this. Where's Keith Lee? Keith Lee's gone back. Keith Lee's under attack. He's getting, Keith Lee's getting it from all angles. He's been shuffled to sick. He's back That's to sick. Kilo's gone through. Keith Lee's now on the back. What is going on? I can't keep track. This is fantastic. Look at this. So now it's now let's see how it's all shaken out. We've got now Davis in second. Talbot now sits third. Kilov's up to fourth. Butchers to fifth. Keith has been shuffled down from second down to sixth and now under attack from teammate John Monroe. What a scrap going on I for this one. I'm going to try to see if we can pull this back to see where Keith Lee lost all these positions. Because I, I didn't think they were that close at that point. So this here. We're going quite a ways back. This is this is all oh, I could already see what, what's happening here. So let's hop on board with Keith Lee. All right, little nudge side by side, still still being passed. And I'll mind you that oh. And this is about we'll go back live in a moment. We need to know what happened here, as as you, as you can see here. Then Davis through, Keith Lee crossing over. Now what goes in? Davis holds the outside. Keith Lee down the inside. And then Davis crossing back over here with a little contact, which sends him wide. And this allows the entire freight train to go by Keith Lee. And that is what sent him back so far back. But we're now back live, uh, basically in the same spot as he was, as Keith Lee is being mugged through this goal. That is fantastic well, stuff. Fantastic yeah. stuff. Well, they're... Well, they're Cup there. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm getting a little bit of lag because, well, for a second I, I did see Ryan Callan drop down the standings, but it looks like that was a bit of lag. Is now I think we've got is that Butcher under attack. Yeah, we're now we're now Monroe, back. Live. Yes. I, I was a little mixed up on the on the replay there. So, oh no, sorry, we are on replay. This is live mode now. Toby Davis second place, Talberg in third, Simon Kiro closing exit. in big time on these drivers. Now we're at the seventh seventh lap. We're just uh, cut, we're just almost to the halfway mark here of this race. Um, it's a little different story this time around with a little more battling up front here. But now with everyone s settled out, let, let's go have a look and see what's going on in the back here. Chris Hack in, in ninth. People Rodriguez, 10th, followed by Thomas Jacobs. Pedro Amaral having a little tougher race this time with so much, more, so many more people around him that's potentially putting him off his game because he had a great run and finished 7th in that last race. Just looking back now to, as we're looking behind the top 7, as they continue to scrap amongst each other. Ryan Callan still sat in 8th, holding off Chris Hack in the call. Nova Machine in ninth. Then we've got this wonderful train of cars with Rodriguez holding up in 10th, ahead of Thomas Jacobs in 11th. Pedro Amaral not having the, not running in the top 10 like he was in race 1. He's back no, in no, 12th. Just, just as I was saying there. And Jacobs, though, uh, making up for that little off-track incident in race 1. Absolutely. He's doing a fantastic job. Oh, he moment. puts... Rodriguez goes wide. Jacobs capitalizes and pulls through. Amaral, can he take advantage of this? Amaral down to the inside. Book it. He's through. No, no. He's trying to hold him off. Rodriguez, not quite. That was a preemptive booking. And I'm, I'm, look at I'm telling you, I'm telling you, uh, Pedro Amaral really just wants to get this flight <laughs> and get out of here. Rodriguez is, is holding him up. He sees Jacobs go through. Amaral wants to make that flight too, and he just couldn't quite do it. And also look at Gary Lillard thinking, come on boys, don't leave me out of this, I want a piece of the action too. He's trying to send it up the inside. I think he went round the outside of Heights Petzold a few corners ago. So he's now up to 13th. And now look at this, I think Petzold almost left the door open for Matazewski in 15th place, who's dropped off since his, since his Q1 pace, which is a little bit, little bit of a shame. And I'm wondering here, just looking back in 8th place, as we look further up the field, I wonder if Callan and Hacker start just to slightly work together, of course, a little bit, because they're starting just to close in a little. It would the make, the, mo it would the, make top, the absolute the most sense to work together at this point it would. because battling is not going to do you any good but fall into the clutches of that group behind you and Thomas Jacobs, Rodriguez, Amaral and they've already done it. Oh, just ahead, John Monroe is pushing hard to get by Chris Butcher. These two are battling tooth and nail. Butcher doesn't like giving an inch and Monroe is trying to take a mile here and it's not going to happen very easily. So we've got now precision. Oh, oh. So, so, <clears throat> sorry, Keith, I was in track. Amaral is off at turn four. Pedro Amaral in the Portuguese racing team car. He's oh, he's the, out. He, Pedro Amaral he's, he's is out. He's out of the race. Oh, no, needs to, dear. Let's, let's try and look at a replay of that. Because I'm trying to see. Uh, oh, he blew his engine. That's the reason why I saw I oh, see flames on the replay no. underneath, underneath. And that was a blown engine of Pedro Amaral. And that's a shame. He was on course for 
he had a great t finish in seventh place in race one, and now it's going to be zero points being for race two. That is a real shame because he was, so, he was in my view, one of the drivers of the race weekend to come yeah, into absolutely. division and, one. And, and and the story that you were just talking about is Callan and Hack working together. They have closed significantly. They're within 1.1 seconds now of John Monroe and Chris Butcher, who seem to be working together, but they're not getting it done quite as good as these two guys together. So we'll see those guys close up very shortly. But that that, that group of Jacobs, Rodriguez. Gary Lennon, they're now missing oh. Amaral. Sorry, Monroe's fought his way up the inside in turn 14, and Monroe's into six, so he's taking the advantage of Butcher leaving the door open, and they'll get the toe, and now look at both Cal and Hack, they'll, they'll get the tandem down the straight as well. So they're punching, they're punching a bigger hole in the air, but look at that, Monroe and Butcher saying, well, if you two can play that game, we can do exactly the same. But of course, this is over position rather than working together. Monroe trying to work the inside, a little bit of contact on the bumper, but Monroe has managed to hold the place. So fantastic, again, opportunistic move for Monroe, as we've seen him do so many times in these past couple of races, to take the place where there possibly wasn't any kind of gap. And Monroe is doing a fantastic job, but Butcher is really giving him a headache right now. But of course, all that's going to force Cal to, to close in as Callan goes over the curves, right over the anti-cuts through turns four and five. And almost, it's the back oh, of the Oh, Sideways. what a drift that was! Yeah, he's making it. He's not making it easy on himself, is he? <laughs> Definitely not. Yeah, I think. Uh, I think what you're going to see now is I think Chris might realize he might have to get, either get by Callan or just push extreme. Uh, he's he's dropping off a little bit. Callan's pushing extremely hard here. I think trying to close up on these guys is just ahead. You can see John Monroe and Chris Butcher battling still hard. Butcher's packed through as Monroe. Um, Monroe is trying to find a way by and, and in any way he can, but Butcher is not an easy man to pass. I've seen in the past in all the series he's raced in, when you want to get by Butcher, you need to earn that spot. And he's showing why that is right now. But uh, a little ways ahead of these guys, you've now got Keithy and Kilo on the back of the two THR drivers. So as it sits, uh, Toby Davis would take maximum points away from Keithley in this scenario right now, um, as, as this being the best case scenario, because I really don't see them catching Lauritsen, who is now a, a cool six seconds ahead of this entire field, which is un it's uncanny considering how close the, 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 the racing has been this season. He's now 6.4 seconds away, four tenths, of se four tenths that lap alone. As these guys battle, trying to take position for points here, uh, it's just going to be, uh, we could see either some great racing or we could see a little bit of, uh, you know, heartbreak maybe? Well, possibly. But the, the, what we have to remember is, of course, that looking at second, third, fourth, the fifth, these are the top four in the championship. These are guys that are not in the same world, but it's first, second, third, fourth. And what's happened to Monroe? Monroe's dropping down the order. I've, oh, I've no. seen all the timing screens. What's happened to him? Let's, ha let's have a look. Uh, he's dropped right down. He's now. Well, he's, oh, now he's still off the track. He's, he's off. Still off. Now, what was what caused that? I'm gonna try to bring the replay up myself. Right, I got it right here. I got, we got it. Live. Oh, he hit the back of Butcher. We got the. We got the round. We have the replay live on uh, on RRD here. So as he goes goes through turn one and two, that's why it's so difficult through there. Uh, through one and two, he's close. He's close, and he's coming up on Butcher. This is gonna be up into up into three and four, right into the back of him, and he and he sends himself off. And he's into the kitty litter and just trying to make his way back. It's a long way through that kitty litter, uh, especially in these cars with no power. So um, it, that was a very unfortunate move for Monroe, but uh, fortunate for Butcher because now he's a little free and clear. But now that group of Callan Hack is now closed right on Butcher, and they're going to be battling for the sixth position. While this train up here for four. Oh, what is this? Side by side. That is Simon Kilo went in really deep on Talberg down into the penultimate corner and, and he didn't quite hold it. But now Keithley's passed up on Kilo and now it's going to be T Davis, Talberg, Keithley, Kilo. And obviously that was some exciting stuff because I, I screamed quite loud. This is what we're looking at. This is this this was the pass. Kilo, uh, slow motion. It doesn't look any better, but it's still just as exciting. Kilo went so deep in there. He was already sideways and, and Talberg was able to get back across. And then Keithley takes advantage of that. But man, that's some, that's some exciting stuff. I'll tell you what is exciting as well. Watch this battle of the for four over six, seven, and eight. These three still going at it. Callan had the run up the inside of turn 14 to take sixth. But now they're still side by side. Slight contact between the two of them. Fantastic drive with it between the three Englishmen as they head through turns three and four. Oh, is that a car in the infield? I saw a car in the infield in the background. Now, who was. I don't see anyone that? missing on the... Uh, no one's dropping down the, the lid, no, the list, I, so I we're did, not too, too worried. Either that was bodywork, or I saw a car go off into the gravel on the inside of turns three and four. I saw I saw, did see a black speck on my screen. Or it could have been Ghost of Most Autodrome Past. 
<laughs> Could have been the guy that haunts around here, just bits yeah, random yeah, cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just, just hangs, just hangs on, and he's the guy who grabs a hold of your car as you're jumping over the anti cuts. <laughs> We're getting a little oh, off topic here. We got some racing up front here. As these guys are now yeah, again, yes, absolutely again. This is oh, and look at this. Tolberg is the loser on this one. What happened? He got shocked wide. He was oh, shocked wide Kilo. by Keithley. Keithley squeezes through on Davis. Side by side contact. Davis out wide. This is no old part action. Let's get a quick look at what happened there. As as uh, Tolbert goes wide, let's see what happened. Oh yeah, you can see that Kilo down the inside. He's out in the marbles. Nothing he can do. But this is back life. Oh! Keithley down the inside. He's pushed his way through. Kilo's got the inside of the final corner. He squeezes across. Oh, Davis on the curb. Davis on the curb. He is oh, not how did he save that? That oh, was incredible. Wow. And that was contact what? from Keithley though. Yeah, Keithy that was. Get, Keithy that gave was. him a nudge, and that was. I'm not that sure was definitely feel, contact. But that, let's that's getting involved. Look at that. So, so this was. Let's pull this back. We need to. We, it's it's going to be imperative <laughs> that we see that. I so mean, many replays. Yeah, I, I, you know what? And I, this is we'll replay all night watching this kind of stuff. Look at this. Look at nice move by Keithley. Contact Davis sideways. So now this is this is Kilo. He's down the inside. I I I'm not. It's 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 questionable. He's got the run. Let's see. Now he is. What's is he being? He's being sandwiched there. And nowhere to go, so he comes across the track. It's up on these really high curbs, and and it sends him up. He's almost doing like a board slide, like he's a skateboard, and he's on on the on a nice curb there. But that is a, a losing proposition for the THR driver of Toby Davis as Keithley smoothly slides into second to make it a precision one-two again. <laughs> Incredible, and n now that. So uh, Davis has dropped back, but he's right on the exit of the curves, and he's really pushing. So either he's frustrated, or he's just he's just really kind of trying to push harder than, harder than he needs to now that he's back in back in fifth. But now it's Talborg who's taken up the reins of the T THR challenge. Remember, this is now you're looking at first and second ever championship. I, was, I, I know it because Keith Keith will now be on points based on the first round. Keith will be in, th in third place, second place now in the championship. Excuse me. Well, I can tell you that I, I think that Talborg is definitely going to be a little more aggressive because. It's going to take trying. that. It's going to take that because at this point, with Ke look, Keithley is going to need some misfortune for him to have a chance at this championship with the lead that he has and the consistency he's shown. Um, so he needs to take these opportunities to nip away at the points in hopes that possibly something, you know, maybe uh, look at uh, uh, blowing an engine or something of that sort later on in the season. Because, you know, if it comes down to a couple of points, the right here is where you make them. He's got the slipstream. Can he make the move? Or is he just going to stay there, status quo, and wait for a better opportunity? We're on the 13th lap, as Alexander Lauritsen is now 9.7 seconds clear of this field. A phenomenal gap in this championship that has always proven to be so close from the from the top down. Um, we're now looking at the battle for second with a another, uh, looks like a precision sandwich. But da Davis is closing. Davis is definitely closing. Just so what, do you, what do you think? Why well, he's he's gonna catch Oh, Tabo got the inside. Tabo got the crowd chasing. This is move. But Keithy shut the door. That was yep. that was. In, I, I was looking. I was looking back on my view from back from Keithy from the rear spoiler, and just saw Tabo take a big lunge up the inside of turn five and. Keith well, just is shut the door completely. Look at Kilo now trying to force his way out the inside. Oh, Kilo's wide. He's going to lose his spot. Davis is there. He's already... Th oh, no, he's not quite there. I thought Davis was closer. But Davis was, went wide too. I was going to say that this is the probably the best view to find out what's going to happen between these two guys because you can see what's happening. as he's, oh, he, That almost looked like a little bit of a short break there. Closing in on him. But uh, you've got... Ke so this will give you a good perspective of uh, what... Um, Talbrick is seeing where he's trying to be opportunistic against Keithley's little slights and errors. But uh, looking back, Davis is just there right on the doorstep waiting to close in. Can Talbrick do something here? This is, this is, I would have loved to have shown some of the battling back further, but this is very, very important to this championship. Uh, Talbrick on, da uh, on Keithley because every point counts between these two going forward in this championship. So let's have a look back from Keithley as, as Talbrick's going to get in tow and see if he can close. He's got the right gap to get the run. Can he make the move? Dave, uh, oh, Keithley's gone defensive, but look at this. Tolberg has the run. Down through turn one, he's got the oh! inside. Contact! Contact through turn one, through turn two. Tolberg eases off on the penultimate lap. Lauritsen gaps his, uh, takes his lead and, and makes it a little bigger to 10.4 seconds now. Can Tolberg do this? This is, he's got a lap and a bit to go. Davis is closed on this group. I don't know. This is this is tough stuff that Talberg Talberg is going to have to f dig deep and find uh, that little bit of racing 
spirit that he could find to, to push through and take this spot away from Keithley. Well, Tabor definitely, you can't say he's not daring because that was a... To try and force your way up the inside through turn one, that's always going to be brave. And Talborg has definitely got bravery in spades, uh, whatever he's driving. And Talborg really giving Keithy some more he headaches here as they head up towards the end of the second sector. Underneath the bridge, <coughs> he's trying to force Kilov wide a little bit. Now look at Kilov really closing him right onto the back bumper. They are literally, they are literally physically sandwiching Talborg now with two precision cars. And yeah. Davis is sat back there and he's trying to close in, but just doesn't seem to be getting close enough as he, as he wants to. So right at the moment, as much as he'd love to help his teammate, and uh, he generally would because, of course, any points that THR is going to try and take away, it's always going to help. And look at this. They're trying to dummy this way, and the other one, oh, more contact. Kilov notices the back of Tarball's car, just gets slightly out of shape, this and now this allows Davis to close in once more. It's second, third, fourth, and fifth. Larison has started the final lap already. It's now, the gap's down to just under 10 seconds now. But this is a scrap now for oh, this is second, third, fourth, okay, and fifth. So, so on the penultimate lap, we are, now starting, we are now starting right the final lap. Davis is there and can potentially give assistance. I've seen that now uh, Keithley has gone full defensive when when uh, when Talberg is that close to him. So through turn one, through turn two, David, uh, Talberg a little bit sideways. Keithley nice and smooth through there. Coming up to three, uh, th there's going to need to be some opportunistic passing here as Davis looks down the inside of Kilo, not going to do it. Talberg closes in very close to the back of, the, of uh, Keithley. This is, this is getting very close now that that anything can happen here in this final lap. Oh, look at this back. This is what Keith is seeing. Contact! Oh, Davis! He's wide. Keelan holds it. And, oh, wow. This is just close, close, close. Tolberg is going to try anything he can. Davis trying to look down the inside of Kilo. They're side by side in the background. Not quite there. Is he going to do it? Davis, no. He has to back off. Kilo holding true. Tolberg closing in ever so slightly on Keithy, but cannot seem to find the way to go by. Do you think he'll I, find it, Scott? Do you think he'll I'm, find the way through? I, I can't call this. It's too <laughs> close. They're so close. These four guys, you can throw a blanket over them. They're so close. Two, three, four, oh, five. Contact. Look at Tabor got the inside. He Tabor said it. Keithley. And easy through. Oh, more contact. Sideways with Tabor. Kilo's up onto the grass. Oh, unbelievable. He takes the shortcut. He can't keep the position if he gains it. No, he falls back. No, he's and Davis lose. Locks, into, locks into four. He's, he lost the little Incredible. position. So, yeah, that's... Uh, so, so Davis but, comes out the winner there. But, what, you know, we'll wait and see what that happens with the stewards. Davis the is front. looking. Davis is looking around the outside, trying to force the issue on Keithley. Oh, this, seems, look at, this seems like this seems like uh, this seems like an assault here. As they come through the front. Oh shit! We uh, I apologize. We had to get to Lawrence, and we didn't give him his due. I, I big apologies to Alex. But Alexander takes the win. Sprint Congratulations to, the line. to him. Crossing the line. It's going to be Keithley taking the second spot, <laughs> followed by Davis, Talberg, wow. and Kilo. And, and again, I have to apologize to Alex for not giving him his due for taking this win, wire to wire, untouched, phenomenal win by Alex. Um, Callan in sixth, Hack in seventh, Butcher in eighth, Jacobs in ninth, People Rodriguez in tenth, Gary Lennon in eleventh, um, Gary Lennon in eleventh, Heinz Petzold in, uh, sorry, uh, that's People Rodriguez, Gary Lennon in eleventh, Petzold twelfth, Matuszewski thirteenth. John Monroe, 14th. He'll be very, un it's very unfortunate for him with that. Jimmy Hughes, 15th. Simon Shepard, 16th. Darren Adams, 17th. 18th, Jay Adji. 19th, Ben Richards. 20th, James Gahigan. And all the results will be posted immediately up on results.touringproseries.com. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, gather some drivers for interviews, and then we will be going forward and uh, doing a bit of talking with the drivers and getting uh, their perspective of how this race went. So uh, we will be right back, and uh, don't go anywhere.
InsideSimRacing.tv, the fastest show on the internet. Sim racing news and reviews since 2007, with new shows every week. GamePod, the ultimate race rig for those serious about sim racing, puts you in the driver's seat with all the controls at your fingertips. Be number one on the road, in the race, in the game. GamePod, the choice of champions. Hello everybody and welcome back. We're just finishing up here with the sixth round of the Tom Onslow Cole Clio series. Most Autodrome, we've seen some ups, some downs, some highs, some lows. We've now got some drivers here uh, to uh, have a word with to find out how the races went in uh, in their perspective. So I, I'm going to start with uh, race one winner Jack Keithley, uh, who swapped first uh, with uh, his teammate Alexander Lortzen, who we will get to in a moment. Um, Jack, talk to me uh, about how, how things went out here today. Oh, well, well I mean, it's not some race, both races. Well, I mean, get, just tell me, walk me through race one. Um, like, you guys seem to have, like, obviously, Toby came through with a flyer lap. It was a surprise for you guys. Um, tell me, you know, how you guys dealt with uh, him being up front and uh, working your way through. Well, yeah, but when there's um, an, a, a non a car outside the team up the front, we we always have a plan of how to dispose of the Crush, kill, destroy. Anyway. <laughs> but, yeah, race one, it couldn't have gone much better with the... Uh, the team getting one, two, three, and John getting fifth. It was just absolutely brilliant. Really pleased for the guys. Yeah, race one, you guys had things pretty well locked up there, and uh, also John Monroe was up there too, which was great to see. Um, now, race two was a different story. Alexander you had a fantastic run, just wire to wire. And I get, I just first off, I do apologize because the battle is for second. I missed out give, giving Alexander his due. So apologies there. I said it in the broadcast just one more time. But talk us through the battling that went on in race two. Honestly, an absolute disgrace. <laughs> it's been reduced to public server racing. Is I can't say I can't say any more than that. That swear, and it was absolutely atrocious driving. Okay, so uh, so not so the precision head not too pleased with the the racing that had happened uh, in race two. Um, we can leave that, all that stuff up to the stewards. That's obviously why we do this, and um, penalties will be assessed uh, based on what is seen and what is uh, noted. So, but well done today, Jack. Um, your team did very well. Um, I believe um, Scott has Alex here now. Yeah, I've got Alexander Lauritz. And Alex, of course, you had a very strong weekend uh, overall. Yeah, just talk us through race one, first of all. Uh, most of the race, you spent it behind Jack. And then into the closing stages, you seem to kind of get a bit, to challenge him a little bit more. I mean, was that kind of in the plan, kind of, you know, stick behind for most of the race? And then it looks as though it was kind of you were on the basis of, you know, you can run for you can run in line of stern for the most of the race. Then last lap, it, it was kind of free for all. Was that the case, or were you always going to stay behind? Yeah, it was the case. Uh, the plan was to uh, get a gap to the other guys, so me and Jack could uh, be first and uh, second in the race. So yeah, yeah. and uh, we drive uh, may, uh, may, many uh, stable times in the race, so that was great. And uh, we make a big gap to the other guys, so that was very great. And then, of course, race two, you were pretty dominant. You took pole position, and then just from, yeah. from, from the start of the race onwards, um, apologies, Alex, but we kind of forgot about you because you kind of just you, you kind of just distanced yourself from the field, and you won by a very comfortable margin. Um, I guess the obvious question would be: It looked easy, was it? Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, the other guys uh, fight a lot, a lot uh, behind me, so yeah, and my time was again uh, stable in the race two, also, so. Yeah, so I make a bigger, bigger gap because they fight a, a, a lot. So, yeah. It was not so hard in the race, too. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Extra stuff. Well, what and I was on pole in the race, too. So, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, well done for that, Alex. Well done for your uh, for your second place and your fantastic weekend. Some decent, decent points all for yourself and precision. And the fingers Thanks crossed for the next for the next round. Keith, I believe you've got uh, Toby Davis waiting with you. I do, um, Toby. So, um. Race one, um, surprise poll. Um, we actually found out later on that you got a nice little draft, put yourself in a good spot to start the race. Um, talk us through race one. Uh, race one. Um, race one was okay. Um, obviously, uh, Precision set the cars up much better than we did and uh, had a much better top speed. So we fixed that Excuse me, for race two. Um, 
So yeah, I mean, I dropped through the pack a little bit, but Paul was was good to have, and uh, shows that I uh, do still have pace after the RF scan has been implemented, uh, contrary contrary to some other teams' belief. Well, you uh, you did do well. Um, you've obviously got. Um... Two decent finishes here. Um, I know the championship is getting very tight, but um, as you know, in any form of racing, anything can happen. Um, race two yep. was a little more different. Um, we've heard from uh, team head Jack Keithley saying that it was atrocious. Um, team head what, are precision, you, yeah. what, what are your thoughts? Um, well, I'm amazed he can call it disgraceful when he was by far and away the worst person in the field in that particular race. Um, it, it, I, I'm just astonished. I mean, I was, I was put into the wall after the finish line, um, squeezed into the final corner, and and quite frankly, it was throughout the duration of the second race. Uh, probably stemmed from me having a go at them at uh, smashing into me and warm up, quite frankly. But uh, to call it a disgrace from the person who was who was by far and away the worst person is is just ridiculous. And okay. uh, well, we'll, we'll we'll keep that's we'll keep all I can the, say. We'll keep the personal attacks to a minimum. I, um, I'm not I'm not being personal. I'm, they, just, I'm saying how I how how it's I very felt personal. it is. Um, but race Only personally, two, if I call them idiots or anything like well, that. Well, well, race race one was was good, good and clean. Race two, um, yeah. look, showed good on the on the sh on the show, and obviously it was a give and take thing, and that's part of racing. Um, and I know that, and I've and I and I saw <laughs> I saw a lot of that from from my standpoint. Yeah. So that's yeah, where well, I stand. We'll see, we'll see what happens in the rest of the season. Keith. We we do we we have the new cars coming in. We appreciate uh, you coming in here, Toby, and uh, talking to us. Um, and I believe you got Simon now, um, Scott. Yeah, I've got Simon. Uh, Simon, again, another decent weekend for yourself, and a decent, and a, a solid haul of points. You were third in in race one and fifth in, I believe, fifth in race two. Um, just talk us through your weekend as a whole, because obviously, for for one, no no disconnections as you had in race two, which obviously is a bonus. Um, but just just sum sum up both races for us as a, as a whole. Just um, ha, did did you feel the weekend went to plan, or do you feel that they could have been that that you, that you could have got more out of your results today? Well, yeah, of course I didn't want, so it wasn't really a perfect weekend. But yeah, I didn't really never find this track and didn't really like it. But yeah, I think a third and a fifth is fine, and then probably a couple of penalty too. So yeah. And just 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 very quickly, of course, you you were involved in the in the big scrap in in race two with, between yourself and Jack and the, and Jesper and, and Toby. Um, what was your viewpoint on the kind of driving standards in there at all? Um, would, would would you agree with the the viewpoints that the, the driving could have been better, or do you have a different viewpoint? How do you stand? Yeah, it could definitely be better. It was almost impossible to stay in front of THR because there was just bump running, so there wasn't much to do. <laughs> Course. Like I said, we'll, we'll keep the kind of the uh, uh, pleasantries, if you want to call that, to a minimum between THR and position, of course, to obviously for the for, for the to, to respect, of course, the broadcast. Um, but still, well done, Simon, for your results today for a third and fifth, and best of luck. Um, I'm going to very quickly also jump uh, to John Monroe as John as well. Uh, John, I think it's fair to say that the, um, race one didn't go too bad for you. I think you were in the top five somewhere there or thereabouts. And then just just talk us through that first, because because. Over qualifying, and you made it into the top top ten, and then you were kind of always around the top five. I mean, race one. How did race one go for you in terms of um, how you felt it? Um, qualifying was good for a start. I think that's where I was struggling in practice, just getting the the one lap together. I could nail each sector individually, but just not them all together. And I seemed to do it pretty well in qualifying. So um, I was I was delighted with third because I knew I you know I, I had okay I had okay race pace, but I didn't think I could keep with Simon and that and Jack because of my tires. And um, it basically, I, I got a good start. I was running third, just trying to save them. Uh, and then I made a slight mistake, which allowed you know Simon and Alex to go past. And I wasn't going to hold them up. And then ended up getting involved in a in a Titanic scrap for, with the guys behind. So basically, we, we, I mean, it was a good battle, but unfortunately, we were, um, we, you know, we were holding each other up, and we lost we lost the draft to the guys in front. And um, then Tolberg obviously had had a spin off, and me and me and Chris Hack had a fantastic battle, which I need to thank him for. Uh, at the end of the first race, and uh, I got the better of it, and I finished fifth. So yeah, I'm happy, but I'm disappointed uh, that you know I know it could have been more if I'd managed to stay in the, the leading group. But apart from that, um, race one, I'm I'm pretty happy with. And then race two, you're mainly battling with Chris but with uh, Chris Butcher, and uh, obviously it didn't go too much to plan because then you had a bit of an off uh, around halfway through the race. Just talk us through what happened from your point of view on that incident. Yeah, well, um, it was well. Just with the start of the race, it was just a bad qualifying for myself, and um, had to kind of fight my way, uh, try and make my way up through the grid. And I was just getting involved in battles. I wasn't really, you know, involved in the top battle that everyone's, um, you know, the the 
the con controversial battle that was going on in front. So uh, I'm not really in a position to comment about that. But I was hearing some, you know, it, it really didn't sound like uh, too good stuff. So hopefully that's um, got rid of within within Nucleo, and I can't really say much more than that because um, I didn't see it myself. But um, nice and political. <laughs> and ended up ended up behind. Um, uh, behind the guys and me and Chris were just kind of fighting it fighting out for the last spot uh, and then he, he gave me a, a bump um, and uh, passed me on the lap before and um, then we had a you know I, I, we had a good battle for the rest of that lap I was um, I was being a bit aggressive I mean I was a bit annoyed at the time because you know I was another kind of bump and run incident but then uh, into the into the left hander I just missed my breaking point um, and I, I you know I was thinking oh no this is going to look like it's intentional but um, yeah it, I mean I, I missed I, I think I just slightly missed my breaking point at the time. I can't remember breaking breaking late, but I just seemed to carry so much speed into the corner, and I'm pretty sure I wouldn't have made it without Chris's car being there, um, hit the back of him, and um, I hope it didn't cost him too much. But I I spun out, so um, yeah, we we talked about it since, and um, there's no hard feelings um, between us. But uh, yeah, I, that, that's it for my incident. I apologise to Chris for that incident, but um, you know, it was I, I paid the penalty for it, so uh, I guess I'm gonna have to accept it and move on. But yeah, I mean, it sounded like the driving standards weren't weren't too high this week, so. Um, um, hopefully we'll be back in back in good order for, with the new Cleo, which um, I think everyone's excited about. Yep, and everyone settles down, and uh, we'll move Indeed. on to the next to the next to the next round in four weeks. But I just want to have one final word with one driver, um, Pedro Amaral, who uh, made his first his debut in Server One, and we talked about him quite a bit in the broadcast for for putting on a great performance. Um, Pedro, race one, you were in the thick of things. A couple of things happened, some good racing. Um, did you have have fun? Obviously, racing up here in Server One. Well, uh, definitely I had a lot of fun. I know a lot of guys now are very angry, as I heard, but I'm very happy. <laughs> so, um, first race was uh, was good for me. I was hoping for a top 10, and seventh place was, uh, was really, really good. Yeah, it was a very good run, and we, we, we saw you running up there in, in race two, and uh, you, did, you ended up with a blown engine. Um, just a little excited on the downshift. Yeah, um, we were four or five cars uh, uh, battling through all the corners, and uh, I was uh, at a time behind people, and I I think I braked a little bit late, and I saw his back coming very fast, and I didn't want to hit him, so I just used the gearbox and I I blew it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, now. Uh, I just want to say congrats, Pedro, and we're glad to see you up in Server 1 and running with these guys. Um, and definitely uh, a surprise to everybody to see that uh, up there. And uh, see, hope, look forward to see you um, compete in the, uh, the ne with the new cars coming up in four weeks. So um, we, have, um, we have another, we'll be talking a little bit more about the, uh, the change of cars. Um, and as you can see on your screen, this is another shot of the 2013 cars. This change is taking place and we'll start for the next round of the Tom Onslow Cole Clio series. Um, the cars will be a little bit different. We'll see how they work out. Um, hearing some good things from the drivers. But um, it should be exciting. And also, just please keep keep an eye on uh, our Facebook page, forums, the whole thing. Uh, we have renders being done by Darren Adams for the 2008 era bodywork of these cars are going to be taking pictures of all the winners um, of the 2008 era um, t uh, Clio series so be sure to look for that and we thank Darren Adams for his work it's to commemorate the, the closing out of these cars and uh, the bringing in of the new so um, also a couple more things TPS news to talk about the next event that we have coming up will be the virtual V8 supercars which is coming up on June 8th at 1715 GMT from live from Montreal, Canada, my home country. So uh, it is going to be, it's one of the uh, only two tracks that is not Australian on the calendar uh, and you don't want to miss it. Montreal will be great action. It'll be some uh, some close stuff and you'll have Danny Asbury and Ryan Callan on the comms for that this Friday, this Saturday. Um, but we'd like to thank also obviously Tom on Slow Cole, uh, GamePod, Team Hard, uh, Simsync Pro, um, multi BC um, and all of the people who support us and all of the admins that work with us and again thankfully to the drivers and also all of the viewers who tune in week in week out but you can also like us on Facebook to uh, facebook.com slash touring pro series and also we new have our new live timing app uh, which is live uh, touring pro series dot com slash live timing Callan you may be able to top, top me out on that but uh, it's uh, it's going to be um, just keep an eye on our Facebook page for any updates that are coming up. Scott, um, great racing this weekend, and uh, look forward to doing the next event in four weeks. 
Absolutely. Um, obviously, some of the racing and race two, of course, for us to watch, it was great. Obviously, some of the drivers, they obviously don't share the same opinion, of course. But still, we've had some two great wins for uh, Jack Keithley and Alexander Laritz. And some fantastic racing, of course, some great performances from guys such as Chris Hack. And, of course, Ryan Candid did a great job in race two and also Pedro Amaral in race one. But of course, I guess the, the biggest talking point, apart from the races today, of course, is unfortunately we have to say goodbye to the Clio. We have to say goodbye to the 2008 car. As we said, we have to say thank you for its service and th- for its three and a half uh, seasons of service. And uh, of course, those guys, cars are going to go away. And of course, it is sad to see it go. But of course, uh, out with the old, in with the new. Yep. You get to see the brand new Clios in action for the first time in four weeks time and I believe that's going to be at Croft and that's going to be a fantastic weekend of racing to see exactly what these cars can do in a race situation uh, first time out. Well absolutely and uh, we will say on that note we will say goodbye leave you with uh, the Clio trailer and we will see you guys in four weeks for the next TOC CS race. Bye bye. GamePod the ultimate race rig for those serious about sim racing puts you in the driver's seat with all the controls at your fingertips. Be number one on the road, in the race, in the game. GamePod, the choice of champions. Inside SimRacing.tv, the fastest show on the internet. Sim racing news and reviews since 2007, with new shows every week.